tradition that has been fought for since 1897. It has survived the threat of two world wars, and now it leads us into a new era. To win this trophy is the ultimate football achievement in the land. To be the best. But the path to victory is not an easy one. It requires total dedication to a dream. An all-conquering determination an unstoppable will to win. The courage to overcome disappointments and use them as your strength. It is to work, to sweat, to bleed. It is to run faster than you ever thought you could. To fly higher than you ever dreamed possible. It is to never give in, never accept defeat. Yes, the season is long and grueling. It demands much, and it takes its toll. It is not easy to achieve. It is the 1987 VFL Premiership. The ultimate reward. And a very good afternoon as we welcome viewers around Australia and throughout the world to our live coverage of Australia's most prestigious sporting event, the VFL Grand Final of 1987. For both these sides, Carlton and Hawthorne, this is their second successive Grand Final appearance. For Hawthorne, the quest is for back-to-back -back premierships for the first time in the club's history. For the Blues, a chance to atone for last year's defeat and bring further success to an already powerful club. Carlton has so far set the pace for this season, finishing the home and away series on top of the table, ahead of the Hawks. Both sides, both star-studded lineups: Carlton's Kernahan, Johnson, Madden, Silvani, Reese jones Hawthorne's Puck, Buccanar, Adir Peter Menico and Flatten, all great players, each a household name, and with John Flatten giving Hawthorne their second Brownlow medal in as many years, their stocks are high. Carlton won their only finals appearance this year, that against the Hawks to bring them straight into this match. Consequently, the Blues have played only one game in a month, and whether they'll be fresh or stale as a result is a point of conjecture. Hawthorne are not without match practice. Who will ever forget the win against Melbourne in that preliminary final last week? 48 and a half minutes have gone. Alan James has a close look at the situation. The long kick taken by Swell plays on. Langford comes out with the ball. Throws it down. Buccaneer a trip. Buccaneer is free kick. He is a champion. He is a great kick. If he kicks this goal, Hawthorne are in the grand final. The umpires haven't heard it yet, I don't think. If he kicks this goal, Hawthorne are in the 1987 grand final. If he misses, Melbourne are in. There's the kick. It's a goal. It's a goal. Hawthorne have won with a kick after the siren. What a performance. A magnificent performance this by Hawthorne. Poor old Melbourne. You've got to the hearts go out for the Melbourne Football Club. Stephen Stretch can't believe it. But there's the character. That was a courageous win that by Hawthorne. Rose to the point of the square. Kernahan in front of the mark. The Grand Finalist of 1986 got the new season underway with a rematch in the opening round and for Carlton it was a case of starting out much as they finished the year before. A 45-point loss to the Premiers was not the best of starts but it was only a temporary setback for the Blues who were to lose only another three games by the end of the home and away 22 match series. Today the Blues will be reminded that two of their four losses were at the hands of Hawthorne. On the second time they met, the Blues were to lose by the narrowest of margins, and that may have been a sign that they now have the measure of the Hawks. If we note the form they displayed when the two sides clashed in the second semi-final, the Blues were superior and won their way straight into today's Speedo Grand Final. 
Carlton is a club steeped in tradition. This is their 68th finals appearance for a total of 14 VFL premierships. The last of these in 1982, bringing back-to-back -back titles to the club after claiming the trophy in 1981 as well. A win in the grand final today will see the Blues end the Hawthorne dream of their first back-to-back -back premierships, but Carlton are happy to end that dream in a bid to add another flag to the tradition of one of Australian football's great clubs. The Blues are there, and it will take a great team to beat them on grand final day, 1987. Welcome back to the VFL Sports Centre. Hawthorne coach Alan Jeans is a man who displays little emotion and although this is his big day of the year, it's nothing new. Alan Jeans has done it all before. Hawthorne coach Alan Jeans would be one of the most respected men in VFL football today and rightfully so. Jeans' playing career was a relatively short one spanning the years from 55 to 59 and in that time he accumulated 77 games with St Kilda representing Victoria in 1955. In his playing days, Alan notched six night matches, including a premiership in 58. Alan Jeans took over the coaching role at St Kilda in 61 and continued in that post until 1976, 338 games later. In that time, the Saints won their only daytime premiership in 1966 and finished in the top five places on another nine occasions. 1981 was Jeans' first year at Hawthorne and this is his seventh season with the Hawks. In his first year, the Hawks finished in sixth place and since then have never been out of the five. Premierships in 83 and 86 have been part of the reward for Alan Jeans and Hawthorne. It would be a new achievement for Jeans to coach to back-to-back -to -back flags in his 511th VFL game. And now on VFL Grand Final Day 1987, we welcome Dennis Cometti. Good afternoon, Dennis. Yes, good afternoon, Ken. An absolutely glorious day here in Melbourne. The temperature in the low 30s, would you believe that? The Grand Final of 1987. A replay of last year's grand final. Things perhaps have changed a little bit. Carlton go against the Hawks and with me, Bob Skilton and Peter McKenna. What about this hot weather, Bobby? 31 degrees. Who will that favour? Well, the last time it was 31 degrees, it was won by Hawthorne in 1961, their first flag. Oh, trivia. What about Pete? Well, I the think atmosphere that, oh, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. You'd think it was the middle of summer here at the MCG, and I think that Carlton have got a lot to prove after last year. No one likes losing a grand final. Dennis, and, uh, capacity. Yep, about 100,000 people here as Hawthorne. 
the chair to come onto the Melbourne cricket ground, led by their veteran Michael Tuck. They won through to this game in that magnificent preliminary final last week. There's the joint Brownlow medalist from Monday night, John Platt and Hawthorne. In the finals for the last six years, it's their fifth consecutive grand final appearance. Their record this season, 19 and 6. Hawthorne. Pritchard's out there, so I would imagine Dunstall might not play. Now, this could be a body blow for the Hawks. Jason Dunstall over 90 goals this season, 94. They'll miss him up forward, Peter McKenna. Well, there is no way known that Hawthorne would play anyone who was slightly doubtful. That's their policy at the club, Bob. I think you agree with that. And if he's not 100%, I wouldn't play him either. I'd take the punt. I don't go along with 100% because uh, um, players have been injured and played in finals on that many occasions and played well, it doesn't matter. But if he wasn't good enough to do justice to himself and the club, and then there's no way. I do see Chris Mew out there. I cannot see Jason Dunstall, but Darren Pritchard is there. Well, that'll be a big thrill for young Darren Pritchard, the uh, Tasmanian. He will have a lot of pre-match nerves, but I think everyone has nerves, Bob, under these sort of conditions. I don't think anyone plays well without having nerves. Uh, I think the uh, only times I've ever really played poorly is when I've gone out on the ground feeling so relaxed that I thought I was going to play well. You must have been tense a lot of the time, Bobby. Mm -hmm. The umpires this afternoon, Ian Robinson officiating in his ninth grand final and Rowan Sawers in his third. But what about Johnny Platten's win on Monday night? What will that do to pump this side up, Peter? Well, I think that John Platten is a champion. He'll play well today, no doubt about that. I think a lot of people uh, forget what a great win it was by Hawthorne against Melbourne, Bob. We must remember they kicked against a strong breeze for three quarters last week, and not many people have mentioned that fact. And I thought that was a magnificent fighting win, typical of Hawthorne last week against Melbourne. I think they're a magnificent club. And, uh, well, whereas Melbourne tried to get away from the Norm Smith image, John Kennedy set the pattern at Hawthorne, and ever since John Kennedy left, Hawthorne have tried to maintain and have achieved it, actually, in maintaining that John Kennedy uh, image. A very low-key, even when they win premierships, they're a low-key club. Well, I don't know, if they win the premiership, I wouldn't call it low-key. <laughs> now, what about the approach of Carlton? They've backed off this week. It's been low-key there, at least in terms of allowing their players to go public. I think it's been disgraceful to be... Uh, I knew you felt strongly about it, Bob. No. I think if you can't send uh, a couple of players along to a charity function for the Variety Club, uh, then uh, that's not part of Grand Final Week. If Hawthorne can send six of their best players along, Carlton have put their players in cotton wool. They, they might come out and the first thing they know about a Grand Final is here today. But if they win the Premiership, then it might set a pattern. Nobody will go to any function. Bob, interestingly, oh. sir, as we, Carlton have just been announced uh, coming on the ground. It'll be very, very interesting. We'll see them in a moment. But uh, we saw Dermot Brereton a moment ago. There were a few rumours going around that they, David Reese jones might pick up uh, Dermot Brereton and John Dorotich may play on the forward line. That'll be, what would be the opinion of that, Bob, if it did occur? I don't think Hawthorne in mind at all. I think it'd suit, uh, suit Hawthorne down to the ground, actually. What do you think, Dennis? Would you, do you fancy Reese jones against Brereton? Not really, no. Dorotich for the forward line? Well, he can play on the forward line. He's a talented forward player, Dorothy. Certainly in Western Australia, he was. But Kick I think, nine in a grand final. Yes. Yeah. He played very well yeah, in final round matches over there, but I think he's needed on Brereton. I think uh, I really believe the key to the game, Dennis, when uh, Carlton come out is that man, Kernahan. Kernahan yep. and Bradley, the two South Australians, if they fire, I think Carlton can win. But I'll tell you what, if Carlton can, if Hawthorne can hold those two great players, I think it'll go the other way. Well, that's when it really matters whether Chris Mew is 100% or not. He was really KO'd last week, and sometimes you can be knocked out and come up OK. Other times you can be just a little bit iffy. Here they come then, the Calvin Football Club, the season's top qualifiers, and the banner reads, True Blue Champions. Well, that is open to debate. That's what we're here for this afternoon. Carlton onto the MCG. Well, uh, interesting, the cheer squad too, as we see the Blues come out, the, the big banner that they had up there, the run through, had uh, caricatures of Peter Motley, and of course, Des English, and two men fighting desperately against bad health. And uh, good luck to both of them, but a great effort by the Carlton Cheer Squad. You'll see it as it comes up. Two caricatures, I'm it's sure. It's a magnificent banner. It's a great effort. And the one on the left, you'll see it in a moment. As the Carlton players are about to run through, the man on the left is obviously Peter Motley, and the one on the right, Des English, battling against ill health. 
counted in the top five for the last ten seasons, a remarkable record. They won back-to-back -back premierships in 1981 and 1982, and their record this season is 19 and four. So the Blues on the ground, that's the scene from the year. Over 100,000 people at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the temperature in the low 30s, the stage is set for the showdown. Of course, going back a couple of weeks, we saw that second semi-final won by Carlton. They played some very good football. They got out of their ground early. And one wonders with these conditions if that freshening up process of missing the week is going to stand them in good stead. Let's go down now to former St Kilda champion Barry Breen. Thank you, Dennis. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, it certainly is a sensational afternoon here today. The weather is very warm, and they say that it is probably the warmest September day for the grand final ever. The wind, very, very breezy, swirling around all over the ground, as can be seen by the way the banners have had their difficulty. The heat is certainly going to test the players' stamina from both sides, but I think it's going to be just a, a wonderful contest, and the atmosphere, as I said, is all set for a great afternoon's football. It's an imposing sight, this one. What about the breeze? Barry was talking about it being a little fluky down there, Bobby. Well, it can be, because on the MCG, you can score at both ends of the ground, but it does get very blustery. It blows around almost in a circle because of the, of the stands. But it doesn't prevent you from scoring, but it does make it hard sometimes to put kicks on line. And you often see players miss kick or do kicks that they would normally not do because of those blustery conditions. Peter, which was your favourite in kicking for goal? I don't think it made any difference, as Bob said, uh, Dennis, at this particular ground. You can score either end. This is the, the greatest football ground in Australia. There's no doubt about that. It's a great service, great size. Hawthorne play this ground very, very well. A completely different game you play here to Waverley. And uh, Hawthorne, you know, not so good at Waverley, but a much better side here. But I think, it, forget the ground, I think the two great sides, the two best sides in the VFL are out there today. And uh, I'm really disappointed Dunstall's not playing to yeah. make it, you know, that 100% even, but I think we're going to, we're in for one of the classic contests in football. Who will Mark Kernahan today? I'm inclined to think Mew. Uh, I, I think that uh, Mew will start at centre-half back and Langford will stay at full-back. Langford's had a pretty good record, but I felt that uh, those couple of marks in that uh, second semi that uh, Kernahan did take when he dropped back there really made a difference, and I'd be inclined to pick a, like, a Mew to pick up uh, Kernahan. Carlton, winners of 14 premierships. That's equal top in the BFL with Essendon. Runners-up 11 times. Hawthorne, six premierships, four times runners-up. We're just about set for the national anthem. Michael Williamson is standing by. And what a scene it is. Hawthorne, coached by Alan Jeans. A chance to etch their names into the record books as the first Hawthorne side to win back-to-back -back premierships for Carlton. They've been there many times before, as I mentioned, back-to-back -back premierships to start the 80s. But not many of this side shared those glory days. There's one of the Warriors, centre screen, Kenny Hunter. A bit of the old acquaintance uh, being sung in the crowds. Typical of the English soccer crowds, Dennis, and the crowd are really getting with the atmosphere of this match. Atmosphere absolutely electric. There's a shot of the crowd, and, uh, well, capacity crowd, as you said earlier, and uh, those players, I think there have been a few nerves at this stage, Bob. Well, I would think they would not be human if they didn't have nerves. Uh, you know, 100,000 people uh, all looking down on you and the pressure that is on each of those players. There'll be mistakes made early because there is in every grand final a little bit of nerves, a little bit of fumbles from trying to gain possession of that ball and the pressure that's applied from both sides. The greatest improvement in the game, as we've often discussed, has been in the tackling and this does cause a few mistakes. And there's sure to be a few early. It'll be the side that settles down early in the piece, but that might not make a big difference because remember the second semi-final, Hawthorne went to a 33-point lead at one stage in the third quarter and Carlton were able to come back. Conditions in this, Dennis mentioned earlier, the couple of weeks uh, with a 30-degree temperature, a couple of weeks rest during the finals must be a big plus, but then it's Hawthorne that they're playing. Yes, to our friends in the United States, no strike here, of course, the NFL is on strike over there. This is being taken live across the USA. And what a day it is. Not many stadiums in the world can hold this sort of crowd. Our players wouldn't dare go on strike. <laughs> Perhaps we're not talking about the same sort of money. Although some of them could be. That man in centre screen earns his corn, Stephen Kernahan. What a star he's been, the captain of the Carlton team. Number 17 there, Michael Tuck. Uh, he is captain of Hawthorne, 34 years of age, originally from Berwick. And he's played 337 games before today. 30 of those finals. 
John Dorotic coming across. Behind him, a man who polled so well in the Brownlow medal. Five first votes, Paul Meldrum. Well, Paul Meldrum, uh, the man with the blonde hair, we saw a moment ago on screen. Number 23, there's David Reese jones 23. There's Paul Meldrum now, centre of screen with the blonde hair. Well, Paul Meldrum, five best on grounds early in the season and uh, led the Brownlow medal count and uh, uh, finished the season in the seconds. Let's go to Michael Williamson. in sport. We start at the VFL Grand Final. Robert Walls, the Carlton coach, anxiously looking on. Michael Tuck has won the toss. Fourth order kicking towards the scoreboard end of the ground. And the ground itself in superb condition. Dermot Brereton on the right. David Reese jones on the left. David Reese jones kicking Dermot Brereton up as Peter McKenna did intimate. Alan James, the Hawthorne coach. Fire Robinson to bounce it down. The start of the 1987 Grand Final. Hawthorne have got an extra man in the centre square. Remarkable. Carlton free kick immediately. It'll be taken by Johnston. Well, Johnston goes long down towards half-court with a high kick. Dorotich is on the forward line. Mark in front. Strong mark is taken by Hunter. And Hunter is only 35 metres out directly in front. How can that happen in a Grand Final? Five players in the centre square. Well, obviously, they have um, man on man and uh, they were not counting as they looked at each other. Johnston into the centre, and maybe the centre man for Hawthorne was in there as well. Kenny Hunter shuffles in. Kick is going to be close. I think he's missed. He has. It's a behind to start the grand final. He could have done better. Yeah, it's not a good kick from Ken Hunter, but as we said, it is blustery out there, and we might see a little bit of that during the day. Chris Langford with his typical long kick right out toward halfback. There's Fraser Murphy. Oh, beautiful tackle made by Gary Ayres. Kicked away by Russo. Robert Dipier Domenico, a hurry kick. It comes out to David Glascott. He's got it. Center wing, a high floating kick towards the forward line. Dorotich, front position. Fisted away by Langford. All players go in hard. There's Paul Meldrum. A hand pass to Wayne Johnston. Now is it a free kick for a trip? It is set up by Ian Robinson at the center half four position at a half forward position let's look at it in replay and watch again the tackle too high anyway the first tackle and there's no doubt it was a free kick and wayne johnston a great finals performer a great champion for carlton can play in many many positions and is a top kick for goal normally wayne johnston there's the drop punt it floats and it's a goal no doubt about that wayne johnston a very reliable kick and goal and an excellent start for the Blues. First two scores on the board. Meldrum ducks, gets the hand pass across. And I wouldn't have played the triple. I thought uh, that uh, Dwayne Johnson tripped himself. That's a very lucky kick. I agree with your problem. Again, we see it going through the centre. No doubt about the goal, but a big doubt about the free kick. Great start by Carlton. Back in the centre, there's the bounce. One down by Madden. Knocked out of there by Russo. Taken now by Glass, got a hurried kick towards half forward. In comes Collins down there, paddles the ball across his own half back line and swings play towards the grandstand wing. 
That's the Mendes side. Good mark is taken by Dennis. Back towards the back pocket. Dorotic is down there. He's the target. Knocked away by Mew. Brilliantly played by Dorotic. Great dexterity. Gets it across to Meldrum. And he's missed to the right-hand side. Well, you can see Dennis by that kick to the breeze. Took that right across from left to right. There's Paul Meldrum. As we said earlier, five best on grounds. Number 23 for Carlton early in the season. The Brownlow medal. Chris Mew doing the kicking in. Langford has done it so far in the match. But they're playing man on man at the moment in that defence and following their opponent. There's Russell Green, a great finals performer for Hawthorne over the years and always plays well against Carlton Green. Green to Swab. Peter Swab, a magnificent game last week against Melbourne. Back to Russell Green. Long kick, Dermot Brereton from the side. Couldn't take it, but he... Oh, there's Morris going in hard. Dippier to Minico, a clever hand. Platten too high. Play on, the advantage is called. Bacanara waits for it. Elvin. Play on, said the umpire. In they go very, very hard at centre-half forward for the Hawks. And the umpire, this time it is Ian Robinson, will come in and bounce. It. Typical grand final start. They're going in solidly. Bounce down inside 50, Hawthorne's way. Rucks go to it. Paul Deer was up. It's knocked away by Johnston. Scrambled out of the pack. Is a chance for Schwab. He goes Goldwood. I think he's off target. He is. First score of the grand final for Hawthorne. 1-2-8 to, to a behind. Peter Schwab manning up with Wayne Johnston at the present time. Big congregation at centre-half back for Carlton. Old fan out as the kick comes in. Not many Hawthorne players bother to go in there. They're waiting for them to come out. That's the right tactic, too. There goes Kennedy. Straight down the middle. Pretty good thinking. Awkward bounce. Deep here Domenico crashes his way through. And again, down he goes. Forearm from Johnston. And Dipper's laid out. Should be reported. I think he is reported. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Umpire Robinson with the pencil. Well, that just shows how tough the tippy head of Medico is because he was hit pretty hard. But I'll tell you what, he got straight up Bob and uh, he's a pretty tough cookie. I think Dipper said me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great character and what a great final. On play. replay again. There it is. Point of the chin, Bob. He might finish it off. There's the kick from Robert Dippier Domenico. He hooks it badly and puts it out of bounds on the full. So, Carlton on one goal, two. Hawthorne on one behind as the kick comes out towards... Oh, that's out in the full, I think. Yes, it is. So, it's a penalty-free kick to Michael Tuck, the evergreen Hawthorne champion, Michael Tuck. And I think Tuck is going everywhere that Bradley goes. Well, that's pretty good thinking by Alan Jeans. There's Tuck and a long, booming 60-metre kick. Brereton from behind couldn't take the mark. David Reese Jones has got the big job on Dermot Brereton. That is brilliant play by Curran. He picks it up, hooks it back, but he's offline and puts it through for another point. And that is to Hawthorne. So they're on two behinds. Carlton on one goal, two. Six points the difference. Kick in from Dean as a short one. Wide of the mark. Fumble from Reese Jones. Now he's in trouble. He's claimed by Morris. And what's the decision? It's going to be a Reese Jones free kick. He was a bit lucky there. Very lucky. David Reese Jones, one of the controversial characters of the VFL. Untidy hand pass intended for Robertson. Alvin comes up, reads it best for Carlton, kicks it around the out of sight. Kerner hands the target. He takes the mark on the speedo sign out of sight in front of the southern stand. Stephen Kernahan, one of the superstars of Australian football. Gets 15 metres, the penalty. Lead it out against Jenke. He drives it long, intended for Dorotic. Be a bit worried about Chris Mule at the moment. He's not moving like he's with it at all. Well, I agree with you, Bob. That's two marks that he hasn't even contested with his opponent. I would be very, very concerned because that's not Chris Mew's sort of form. Dorotic has played centre-half back all of his career at Carlton. He has played a lot of centre-half forward football in Perth, but he is 20 metres out, very slight angle. There's the kick, John Dorotic. It floats across the goals and, in fact, is through for a one point. So a bad miss. One goal, three, the Blues. Hawthorne, two behinds as we see Robbie Walls in the sunglasses at the back. And a big day for him. There's the kick in from Ayers, going straight down the middle. Trying to knock on Langford. Kernahan pumps it Calvin's way. Dennis has got the run of it towards the outer size. And the pace from Fraser Murphy on the assist. Gets it back to Dennis. Good tackle by Jenke. The ball is jarred free. And it goes out of bounds in the right full forward pocket. 
What a day it is. Here's Fraser Murphy. In the replay, Richard Dennis takes it, but Russo smothers the ball, and over the boundary it goes for a throw in. Superb conditions. Perhaps a little too warm for playing the game. Johnston's got the ball for Carlton. Shovels the hand pass out. Russo gets it wide. Taken by Kennedy. Close to the boundary line. No space in which to operate. It's out of bounds and we'll have a throw in. Very clever play that by John Kennedy. As we see the season's marks average. Slightly in favour of Hawthorne. But uh, Kennedy. Big job today on Kenny Hunter. Who played so well against the Hawks in the second semi. Now here's Paul Meldrum. He's got it. A beautiful hand pass further afield, a shot at goal is offline, and that was by Mark Naley, the South Australian, number 17. There he is on screen with the long sleeves. He'll be able to be picked up easily today. One goal for Carlton to Hawthorne on two behinds, and this time it is Chris Langford about to bring it back into play. And oh, there must be 18 or 19 players around the centre half back area for Hawthorne. Look at that kick by Langford, a long kick, Dippier Domenico, can't take it. Oh, Bradley to centre wing. Oh, great pace by Bradley, beautiful backing up as Peter Dean comes away, a lovely pass to Glascott. This is good play, the Blues. Glascott, a hand pass to Madden. He was going to hand pass it, now he gets onto the left foot, up towards the forward line. The players wait for the bounce. Out comes Langford and he does the sensible thing and heads for the line. Good play by Langford there as Alan Jones has a close look at the situation. Langford and Kernahan running back. So no matter where Kernahan goes, Langford staying with him. Boundary throw in. Worked wide of the pack. Bradley slaps it back into the congestion. Down went Bradley. In goes Platten. Held without it. He'll take the free kick. No, it's going the other way. Oh, gee whiz. Last got to get the kick. I can't believe that, Bob. He handballed that ball. That is a shocker, isn't it? Yep. Terrible decision. Yes, Glasgow, outside range, goes looking for Hunter. Off hands, behind a chance now for Ayers. Awkward looking hand pass comes to Jenke. Jenke back to support, and the ball is cleared out of the zone with a long kick from Langford. Johnston gets on the end of it and takes the mark forward and sent away. Johnston back towards half I think it was touched off the boot. Kernahan lunges at the ball. It should have it. been a free kick to Kernahan. It definitely should have been a free kick to Kernahan. Yes, in the middle of the back. Well, Dippy's not too happy there. There's umpire Rowan Saws. A lot of pressure on the umpires as well as the players today. Rowan Saws and Ian Robinson, two very experienced umpires. Greg Deer used his body beautifully there. Peter Russo was in there. It's at half back for Hawthorne as players pounce on top of the ball. Dwayne Johnson, some great tackling going on here. And in comes umpire Rowan Saws. Plenty of pressure there, Bob. Oh, from both sides, yes. Uh, it's a great grand final at the moment. It's that set a half back for Hawthorne. Greg Deere, oh, he's beat for that one there. Greg, this is Gary Ayres, a great finals competitor, this man, as he gets it across to Langford, and Langford gets it out of defence to Morris. It's fisted away by Peter Dean, beautifully. Gets the bounce of the ball, he kicks wide. Kernahan, and Langford giving him a lot of room there, and Steve Kernahan marks at the 50-metre line. Now, the distance would be a big doubt, I would think. The man I could almost... Could the number one controller of this game, Stephen Kernan. If he really fires up today, it will be difficult for the Hawks. He will have to kick from 50 metres. He is on a pretty acute angle. And at the moment, it's one goal for Carlton. To Hawthorne, two behind. Kernahan. It won't make the distance. It's oh, push in the back by Madden. And the umpire was right under that Rowan Swords. He pushed his opponent right in the centre of the back. There's foolish play by Madden. At that end of the ground, you just do not give the ball away that easily. It goes towards the outer side. From behind, Tuck almost the mark through his hands. Puts the ball behind it in the second attempt. Robertson dives on top of it. And the umpire claiming it was held to him. And will move in to bounce it down. Bounce down right half forward for the Blues. Who will lead what is a very low-scoring affair. Approaching 12 minutes, just the one goal so far. Off the ground by Tuck towards centre wing. In front, Dean takes the mark out there. Or is it Kennedy? It's Dean. Dean on centre wing. Looking for options. Goes long down towards Dorotich, and why not? In from the side, Dippy Domenico knocks it towards New. He rides it up. He's in deep trouble. Dippy Domenico comes back in. Down goes Dorotich. Jenkins working over the ball as a whistle, and we'll have a bounce. I noticed Bob Dippy Domenico went one handed for that. He had a shoulder injury last week, we must recall. Yes, but he's still going in pretty tough and hard, so I don't think it's too, uh, too much of a worry. 
Well, I just thought he could have put the two arms up there. It's at half back. Michael tucked the big fist away. Schwab caught. Just gets in the hand pass. Grabbed by Johnston. Johnston from 40 metres fires a goal. Brilliant play by the Settlement. Goal. Magnificent play by Wayne Johnston. He really swooped on that ball and finished it off. Hawthorne had the chance. Swab will watch on replay as Swab takes the ball. Tackles, loses it. Wayne Johnson breaks away from everybody. Steadies, and that's Johnson at his best as he drives the ball right through and brings up his second goal. It's on behind play. Reese Jones is it. No, it's Curran. Well, as you can see on the screen, there's it's really on behind play. That was Ian Aiken, the young fella, number 22. And uh, Peter Curran really having the wrestling match on the ground. And coming off, uh, Russell Morris already has been taken off the ground. Young Pritchard coming on. And I think that's because he was playing from behind on the forward line. I'm sure of that. That was discipline. As he may have been because he lost that uh, one out to Dean on the other side of the ground. And it was tipped that uh, Carlton would have a go at Hawthorne. Uh, Peter Keenan during the week said that uh, they would have a go. Right, well, we're back with the centre. There's young Darren Pritchard. What a great moment for the young Tasmanian. Number 41. He will have tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount of nerves, I would think. A great moment for the young fella as we see the bounce. Madden down to the ground. Carlton looking good as Naley gets it to Meldrum. He can't trap it. In goes Ian Aiken. Court gets in the hand pass. Richard Dennis picks it up. Left foot hooks it back to half oh. forward. Two men. Hunter and Doritic and that Hawthorne back line is looking a little bit loose at the moment. Hunter has created all sorts of problems for the Hawks in the second semi. Well, let's have a look at that replay. On replay, we see Hunter take an easy mark. No defence at all by Hawthorne. Hunter from 40 metres out. The third goal for Calvin. A wonderful start for the Blues. It's exactly what they would have liked. And they've put three goals for, in fact, seven scoring shots to two on the board so far. And it's a great start for the Carlton side as Kenny Hunter on replay. 40 metres out. Puts it through over post height. Into the ground it goes. And a great goal kicked by Ken Hunter. Off on bench. Great kick by Richard Dennis setting that last goal up. Treatment for Russell Morris back in the middle. There's the bounce. Matt in the post to Dia. It's won by Dia. The game being played and controlled by Carlton at the present time. Platten out of the middle. Boots it towards Harford. Pritchard is bundled out of it. Deepy at a minute ago got a fickle bounce. Crashing his way through down there was Dean. Going against the tide was Platten. And they scramble after that ball on the Hawthorne half forward line. And there's going to be a ball up. Barry Breen, what's the situation? Bob, it looks as though Russell Morris has done some damage to that strained knee which he hurt last week and certainly doesn't look very good at this stage. Rotten luck, there's the bounce. One down nicely by Madden to Naley. Through the pack it goes. Over the ball is Tuck, paddles it out nicely. Taken by Russo. Walkwood hand pass came back to Curran. He was dispossessed. Out came the hand pass from Bacanara. Schwab controls it on the centre wicket area. No, the whistle is gone. And it will come back to Curran, who was unfairly dealt with after he hand passed out. So he's got this ball on the line of the square, the attacking side of centre. He pumps it long down towards full forward. Burton, the leaper from behind. Off hands, it's all Carlton at ground level. Away comes Glasgow, bounces once, a second time. He carries the ball deep into the pocket and drives around the southern stand wing. This is almost to the wing. There's the lovely mark for the West Australian. Richard Dennison, a lovely kick as well, as he kicks to half forward. But this time, Kernahan is outpointed by Langford. I think they need uh, a little man up around the goals, Hawthorne. They missed out from the last time they played Carlton up there. There's Jenke to Brereton. Oh, good mark by the champion centre-half forward. Dermot Brereton marks. He will have to kick from 55 metres. Replay, we see the mark of Dermot Brereton. Why wasn't it 15 metres? It should have been. I agree with you. As Dermot Brereton from 55 metres. Can he make the distance? No, he's hooked it. Now, they need a goal very quickly. The Hawks, just to give them that little bit of encouragement, Maley heads to the boundary line. Two great Three kicks to Carlton. Yes, it is too. Bob, as we see, Silvani taking the penalty kick. It is Steve Silvani right in that last line of defence. Alan Jeans must be a little bit concerned at this stage, even though it's only early in the game. 
Paul Carlton looking the better side at this stage. There's Dippier Domenico to Greg Deer. Under the right foot. Who's there? Dean couldn't take it. He forces it back towards the goals. And he'll head to the boundary line, no doubt. No, he doesn't. He brings it back on the left foot now. Meldrum. One hand. He took it away beautifully. No one to kick it to. And in fact, Paul Meldrum has shot it out. Kick by Meldrum. We had a paddock in which to put the ball. And just blazed away. Well, Gary Ayres, a short kick to Russo. Russo will go long. He does a long raking kick. Paul Deere in front. Can't take it. Fist it away. Pippier Domenico. There's no one up there to back him up. Wayne Johnston all over the ground at the moment. Kicks it away on the right foot. Right out towards the half-back line. And the ball rolls over the line. They're falling down on the forward line, Bob. Yes, they're really missing Jason Dunstall. Paul Deere trying to take the screamer rather than move around and lead. And Hawthorne's forward line all over the place at the moment. No discipline at all. He'll be happy. Robbie Walls with this start. There's the boundary from an other side. One down by Madden. They battle after the ball. Via tries to knock it out. Reese Jones, the hand pass. Winning in the race on the other side, Kennedy. Across to Bradley. He slips as he kicks. Kept it in play. Diving at the ball, Fraser Murphy. Buckanara met solidly by Reese Jones. It's out of bounds. And the problem seems to be, Bob, for Hawthorne on their forward line. Nothing on the ground. Carlton getting there and coming very well and bringing it away with ease. We're all over the ground. It matters not uh, Carlton are leading to the ball. They've got the players punching the ball away and their players on the ground seem to be quicker. Carlton have an appetite for the game. Certainly that man has. Through the pack from Johnston. Now it's with Meldrum. Meldrum goes over the top brilliantly to Alvin. He tries to crash his way through. Gets it to Kernahan. He spears a pass towards Hunter. And Hunter's taken the mark about 10 metres in from the boundary. About 35 metres out from goal. I don't think uh, John Kennedy's the man for Kenny Hunter. Hunter has done what he, anything he likes so far. He's already kicked one goal out of the, the three so far as he lines up from 35 metres out. And bad luck for Carlton. Johnston off and Gleeson on. There's the kick by Kenny Hunter. It floats across. Chris Langford's there. Kernahan! Point. It was over the line. Nearly a mark to Steve Kernahan, but in the meantime, it had gone through for a point. Now, Wayne Johnston, this is bad news. He's really hurt either his wrist or his elbow, I would think he is off the ground, or maybe it could be a finger, I suppose. We'll pick that up in a moment. Chris Mew, towards half-back. Dippier Domenico crashes his way through. A lovely hand pass. Russell Green, they need a couple of goals, and they need them quickly. Brereton and Reese Jones, clever play Brereton. But there's no small man support up on that forward line. Ian Aiken to Gleeson. Brereton dives in on top of it. Also in there was Peter Dean. It's at half forward for the Hawks and the bounce will take place. Well, there's the season's uh, freeze average. Well in favour of Carlton. There's the Carlton champ, Wayne Johnston, getting some attention. Bad news for Carlton, that, because he is a match winner. There's Peter Swap battling his heart out. Tries to get in the hand pass. Couldn't do so. The ball was held to him in Rowan Saw. He says, it's my ball and he'll bounce it. Rowan Saws in his third VFL Grand Final. Carlton, a very handy lead. One down by Madden. Brereton wide of the pack. Running over the top of him was Naley. Coming through solidly was Ayers to Russo. Russo the high kick. Down towards full forward. It's way off target. Silvani drifting back. That's the mark in the back pocket. The crowd in excess of 100,000. Packing the MCG. Short kick comes in from Silvani. Now there's a chance. Curran deep in the right full forward pocket. Pulls it back. Too far. Getting back, the mark is taken in the opposite pocket by Robertson. Searching hand pass, sets Alvin away. Alvin storms around the outer side, boots towards centre wing. Kennedy under the ball. Hunter wrestles him, goes back after it. Kenny Hunter in front of the southern stand, sends it down towards the pocket. It's a wayward kick. Out of bounds on the full as we go back to Barry Breen. Wayne Johnson Dennis must have strained his fingers rather badly. He's come off the ground, had them checked, and he's ready to go back on the ground now. Well, here come the Blues again. They're under enormous pressure, Hawthorne. Over the back is Kernahan as they charge in after it. It's knocked away. Coming after it is Gary Ayres. He heads for the boundary line. Paul Meldrum. There were two on one, and the two wins out. This strong play in defence as we see Russo there. Now it's uh, Collins. Collins from the last line of defence. Gets the Hawks out of trouble. Ian Aiken has got two men to beat here. Curran puts him under pressure. Aiken heads for the line, and in fact, it goes over the boundary line, half foot. Gleeson off the ground, and Wayne Johnson back on. So that's good news. And Paul Abbott is warming up also, as is Russell Morris. But I'm sure they'll bring uh, Abbott into the fray very shortly. It's in front of the Melbourne members' stand. Half forward for the Hawks. Lascott. 
left foot kick. And there he is, Abbott, straight onto the ground and doesn't take long in getting a kick. To half forward, Dibier Domenico, some strong work. Dibier Domenico was grabbed by the leg, yes. Has to come back to Robert Dibier Domenico. He was there, no doubt about that, Bob. No doubt at all. In fact, I thought it was a free kick even before that. As Dibier Domenico from 55 metres out goes short. That's foolish. That's ridiculous play. But they're playing very poorly on the forward line. Now, Ian Robinson has blown the whistle. It's got to come back half-back and the Carlton player has to take the kick. It is Tommy Elvin. No, it's not. He's giving it across to Steve Silvani. at centre half-back. That was very, very foolish football by the Hawks and they are not playing well, up, particularly up forward. There's Richard Dennis, an excellent mark. A quiet game the last time against the Hawks, but playing a lot better in this quarter, Bob Richard Dennis. Uh, he's had an excellent quarter so far. In fact, the whole Carlton forward line has for the possible exception of Kernahan. It's an even battle there, but every other Carlton forward on top of his opponent. Boundary throw on other side. On backward of the pack by Madden. It's taken away by Jenke of Hawthorne. 3-5 to 2 points. This is D.P. Domenico running towards the 50-meter line. Not a good kick. The favors Reese Jones. He slipped over. Brereton's got a chance. Oh, they crash into him. Johnston was first to arrive, and then a great tackle was applied by number 35. A shocking kick, Dennis, from D.P. Domenico as we watch on replay. Great tackling by, well, three Carlton players. It finished off with Reese Jones. Yes, Reese Jones really crashed in there to apply the finishing touches after Dean had a go at him. And initially, it was Johnston. This is Dennis kicking inside 50. Fisted away by Abbott. Wide of the pack, a chance for Langford. Feigns a hand pass. Gets around the oncoming Bradley. Goes around the outer side. Little chip pass intended for Schwab. And Schwab has taken the mark on the outer side wing. This is Peter Schwab. And that should be 15 metres. It is. And up by that could be 30 metres, this. And uh, Peter Schwab. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now, umpire umpire. Ian Robinson gave 15 metres. He definitely gave it. Then he reversed the decision and took Swab back to the original mark. Then, that is not consistency at all. Well, there's Peter Swab bringing it towards half forward. Justin Madden from behind. The big arms go up. It's no mark. It's brought out of defence by the Blues. Back to half. Back to sun in the eyes of the players on that occasion. I think it was the sun, do you? I, th I thought it was. You didn't think so, Bob? No, I didn't. Well, it's on centre wing and it's another Carlton free kick. And it is going to Stephen Kernahan. Half, halfway between centre wing. We're into the time on period of the first quarter. 1986, all Australian centre half forward. Steve Kernahan. As it goes to half forward, Dorotic. Was he in control? Holy no man, Dorotic, surely. As they call, lay on. It's still in play as uh, oh, Ayres cocks one straight in the head. And that has to be a free kick. It was a Gary Ayres. Let's see on the bottom of that pack. It's not, in fact, it's Ray Jenke. And half back, you watch this. Right in the head. And uh, Ray Jekki plays on and gives it to Peter Russo on half-back flank. Yes, Russo has the ball on the outer side. Plays on by Hander Collins, who runs up through the middle and kicks towards half-board. Good kick two into the path of Kennedy. He's inside 50 now, John Kennedy. Pulls it down towards full forward. Gives the body touch it. He claims he did. No, he didn't. An excellent goal by John Kennedy. Now, did he come down from the half-back line or has he been shifted to half-board? We did indicate that he wasn't handling Ken Hunter as the kick comes out. We're watching the replay as John Kennedy hooks the ball over the shoulder. No chance of Stephen Silvani trying to bluff the goal umpire there. But the goal umpire having none at all as it runs through for the Hawks' first goal. 15 points the margin. Carlton lead it. That is a very tough grand final. Kennedy is at half forward, Dennis. And Dennis Mew has gone on to Hunter. Madden wins it down. Broke his own knock, couldn't do much with the ball. Whistle, Hawthorne free, and suddenly they're looking better. Michael Tuck's got the free kick. Alongside the centre circle, Carlton player, Fraser Murphy, came from behind the mark and immediately 15 metres. And a hefty 15 is metered out. It'll be heftier next year, I'll tell you now. Here's Tuck. Going for distance, gets underneath it. High kick down towards the pocket. Brereton, the leaper from behind, couldn't take the mark. Off hands, a chance now for Carlton. In goes Platten with great courage. He's almost got a free kick. Yes, he's going to get up to being held without it. Johnny Puts Platten. himself in, Bob, doesn't he? he certainly does. Uh, we watch Johnny Platten. <laughs> Probably similar to the one earlier, and it's gone the other way this time. He's clever, though, isn't he? The way he got rid of the ball, he actually knew he was going to be tackled. 
take possession, did he? No, it was a very clever. Johnny Flatten, 30 metres out directly in front. A high floater. It's very close. In fact, it is a goal. Hawthorne's second goal kicked by John Flatten. And it's 23 to 14. As on replay, we see Flatten come across. He did take possession. He met it in really, it could have been under the new rule. It could have been holding the ball. Because he did take possession. He did virtually throw the ball out one-handed. So he may have been a little bit lucky watching the replay. I think I tend to agree with you. Could easily have been a play on decision. That one there's Alan Jeans. He'd be a bit happier now. He's made a few moves. He had to make moves because Carlton were well on top, but the Hawks it can never write them off. As here comes Michael Tuck. He won't give up. He's flattened after he kicked. So that'll be a free kick up the foot. Carlton's starting to give away a couple of silly free He's kicks. He's reported. Well, it was a bad tackle. It was a late tackle oh. on Michael Tuck. And uh, the free kick. There's the he doesn't look too good, Michael Tuck. Well, that's two Carlton players reported, Bob. I think that aggression you were talking about is being taken out. It won't worry the Hawks. They thrive on aggression. Don't worry about that as we see Russell Green from half forward. Brereton. Dipiano Minico. Dippy. Love it, Dipiano Minico, the brown line medalist of last year, has taken a lovely mark at half forward. And they're fighting back, Bob, the Hawks. They certainly are, as Michael Tuck in looked at by the physiotherapist Barry Gavin uh, now Di Pietromenico lining up I just wonder if Carlton are starting to uh, a few late tackles there's Di Pietromenico the floating kick it comes back it's a goal well, that's an excellent goal by Di Pietromenico and it's three points the margin between the sides there's a pressure kick we've got replay again we see Russell Green put the ball across the ground I think he was looking for Brereton Courageous mark. Now the kick. A long kick from Di Pietromenico. No mistake, the goal umpire does not move at all. And Di Pietromenico kicks his first and Hawthorne third. Impressive record. Not a Di Pietromenico. Joint Brown went middle last season. Knocked down by Madman goes Janky. Now a chance for Collins and close quarters the hand pass finds its way to length of the high kick down towards half forward. A lot of battling down there. It's fisted away by Kennedy of Carlton. Roving the pack, falling over and back was Dean. Alvin comes in to lend assistance. Back comes Green, a poor one, close to the boundary line they battle. Alvin's in front, he's harassed by Kennedy. It's out of bounds, we'll have a boundary throw in. So the Hawks really now tossing the gauntlet down at Carlton. Carlton dominating play for the first 15 minutes. It's a quarter plate in two halves. And Hawthorne storming back into this match. There's the boundary throw in, taken by Glascott. He swings it back towards centre wing. Falling over was Dennis. Collins comes through. Awkward looking kick. Dean comes charging in at the Hawthorne player. Bounces off there. Goes Carlton across the boundary line. Get the ball a little bit, Dennis. I think you're right, Bob. Well, both uh, Carlton players ran at Greg Deer then and just didn't even look at the ball. I agree with you. They had the ball on a string early. They've lost the string at the moment. This is Curran. Long down towards the full forward area. Over the top comes Silvani. Big fist away. Back towards centre field. It's all Hawthorne. Russo's got it. Russo saw it brilliantly. Men dropped back behind the Carlton line. Kennedy's taken the mark. Oh, it's going to be fine. It's got to be 15. Yes, has to be. I know he's not going to give it. I think the big question mark was whether he marked it or was it touch first. Oh, straight off Ian Aiken's hands. Very he questionable. It. Very questionable. But cleverly done, John Kennedy, because umpire Ian Robinson was on the blind side. And what an important kick right on quarter time. John Iron Kennedy. Sounded. 20 metres out, the siren's gone. There's a kick and it's a goal and the Hawks hit the front. At quarter time, the Hawks have hit the front right on the siren. What a great comeback. 4-2, 26 to Carlton. 3-5, 23 and there's that mark. And I don't think he really took that. Ian Aiken had first grab. Welcome back to the VFL Sports Centre. And at quarter time, Carlton have a three-point... Uh, Deficit in the hands of the Hawthorne Hawks. Bought 2 26, leads 3 5 23. Let's take a look at the goal kickers. For Carlton, Johnson 2, Hunter 1. For Hawthorne, Kennedy 2, Platten and Deer Pier Domenico 1 apiece. Let's take you back to the MCG and our commentators for highlights. Play about to commence in the second term, and well, Hawthorne will probably uh, beaten all over the ground in that quarter, and yet they lead at this stage, Dennis. Remarkable football team. They simply keep coming. 
They persevere and they persevere. It got them into this game, of course, last week at VFL Park. The kick after the siren against Melbourne. And this afternoon again, right on the siren to lead at quarter time. Here's Justin Madden, the Carlton vice captain. Umpire saw us to bounce it down. A beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky as we start the second term of the 87 VFL Grand Final. It's one down by Madden, taken away by Tuck. He's improved the longer this game has gone. Dragged off his kick. Gets a hand pass to Platten, who was pushed in the back. No free. But close quarters back to Schwab, to Tuck. Tuck's kick comes down towards the right half-forward flank position. It's a foot race towards the outer side. Alvin leads it. And close attendance, Buccanara, hardly sighted in the first term. And the ball goes out of bounds, but not before Alvin was held without it. Well, that's how good a player. You can see the replay. That's a definite free kick. And... Uh, Good player Alvin is. Buccanara not sighted in the first quarter. He's a match winner. There's Richard Dennis trying to crash his way through. Hurry kick comes down towards centre. This is uh, Glascott. Glascott wide. Find Bradley, who was also quiet in the first quarter. There's the kick up to half forward. Jenke took his eyes off the ball. Didn't go for it then. Peter Swab, the place, slipping over on the hard practice wickets. Says, uh, uh, down to you, Barry Breen, on the boundary. Thanks very much, Peter. Michael Tuck was in a little bit of trouble at quarter time. He's OK. They worked on his nose. May be broken, but certainly OK at the moment. Well, you see the score, 26 to 23. Tucky, Michael Tuck, he'll keep going. He's got a huge heart. The captain of the Hawks, Johnny Platten. Towards centre wing. Oh, gee, this game has changed. As we see Bradley back to Aiken. Aiken a very high floater. Now a lot of the pressure is on the Carlton players. Nearly a good mark to Richard Dennis. Naley. He's done a lot so far, and the ball beats him over the line. But all of a sudden, the whole game's changed, Bob. They do slip around on those practice wickets area for the cricket. Uh, that's where the cricket practice wickets are, and in these hard conditions, it is very slippery. Half forward. This is for Carlton. Kernahan, a hurry kick, looking for Kenny Hunter. He's got it. A lovely hand pass from Hunter to Bradley. This is a goal coming up. Goal. An excellent goal by Carlton. Great teamwork. Ken Hunter again leading Chris Mew to the ball. And Hunter has been a very, very dangerous player for the Blues. Kernahan taps the ball well. We're watching the replay as Kernahan puts it out. Well taken by Hunter. An excellent hand pass. Straight on to Craig Bradley, streaming down the ground. And there's no mistake about that. And the Blues now in front by three points. Great hand pass by Kenny Hunter to set up Craig Bradley. Back in the middle, the buzz around this ground, they're locked together. The Premiership of 87, it's one down to the advantage of Johnston. He started this game brilliantly. I think he's going to get a penalty awarded against him. No doubt about that, deep here to Minico. Gee, <laughs> Dippy went in so hard then, and uh, the Carlton player just gave away a silly free kick. Just backward of centre, he drives it long towards half forward, uncontested. Berylin dropped the mark. He's been quiet this afternoon. Rhys Jones crashes his way through. Boots a floater down towards half forward. Good mark. And the circumstances is taken by Collins. They're not easy to mark. That ball was wobbling around in the air as Collins sends it back towards the Hawks' half forward line. Tuck is under the ball. Up the top came Dean trying to crash his way through Schwab. Down goes Naley. Ball held to him. And we'll have a ball up from umpire saw. See that Peter Schwab, number 30 for Hawthorne, as we see a shot of a very summery crowd. Seasons hit outs average, but talking uh, 23. Well, that's Justin Madden's great work, but Schwab is a tremendous workhorse. There's David Rhys Jones receiving from Glascott. Over to Wayne Johnston, a beautiful hand pass to Shane Robertson. Robertson runs to half for a daisy cutter pass. A ripper pass that was to a leading John Duritich, who has marked 40 metres out from goal. It's a good lead. Lovely pass, and there it is, right onto the chest of John Doradich, and there's not much opportunity for backmen to be able to prevent forwards from marking under those circumstances. He'll be kicking from about 45 metres out directly in front. Well, he had a kick in the first quarter and hooked it uh, badly. Let's see what he does. He's been playing on the back line this year, a shocking kick. I think if he keeps kicking like that, he's put it out back of bounds the back on the ball. Back to the back bags, Jack, the famous Jack Dyer. Great Richmond champion used to say rat bags to the back line. Now this is bad. Rat bags and squibs he used to say. That's right. Coming on is Darren Pritchard and bad luck for Hawthorne because their captain and champion Michael Tuck is off the ground. So that is real bad luck as the ball is forced to the boundary line. This is a real grand final pressure day. This The Hawks have fought back beautifully at the moment. 4-5 plays 4-2. Three points in favour of Carlton. 
Slight disturbance down behind the goal. Boundary thrown out his side. Deer works his way to the front. Ayers over the top, but only as far as his opposite number, Johnston. Johnston swings it back towards centre half or deep. Yeah, Domenico goes back with courage and takes a very good mark. Playing well, Bob. Playing an excellent game. Kicks it grandstand side towards the members' side of the ground. Grabbed by Kennedy. Kennedy long down towards the forward pocket. Knocked away down there nicely by Dennis. He was out of position to take the mark. It's bumped in the opposite pocket by Ayers. Goritich, about 15 metres out, kicks a goal. John Goritich taking full advantage of that mistake by Gary Ayers. It wasn't a good kick, though, from Chris Mew. And uh, I'd be a bit concerned about Chris Mew. Uh, he was knocked out last week. Now, watch this kick. Very poor kick. Didn't give Ayers a great deal of chance. Melbourne forces the ball forward. Goritich swooping on it. And through it goes. Be worried about Chris Mew though, Pete. Once again, the Blues through John Doritich just get sneak in front. They're in front by one goal three, a total of nine points. Here come the Hawks though. Russo has the ball smothered. John Kennedy beautifully to Platten. And Platten kicks long. Bacanara and Elvin, a one out duel. Elvin or out pointed Bacanara badly on that occasion. Great effort by Tommy Elvin. He is well on top of Gary Bacanara. So, with the long hair flowing in the breeze, Tommy Elvin towards half back. Nearly a mark to Aiken. Could easily have been paid. Probably didn't quite hold it long enough. He goes in after it again, Ian Aiken. Hooks it out to Wayne Johnston. But in the meantime, the umpire said it's my ball. He deserves that uh, honour of um, League Recruit of the Year, I think, Ian Aiken. Yes, a lovely young bloke, Ian Aiken. And... Uh, has had an excellent year. The two field umpires, Ian Robinson and Rowan Soares. Ian Robinson, his ninth grand final. Rowan Soares, his third. The ball is hooked out towards Pritchard. He has the ball smothered off the boot. Here come the Blues again, but young Collins, Andrew Collins, heads for the boundary line. And in fact, was that deliberate? Said the umpire, I think he might have, and it's a Carlton free kick on centre wing. We'll watch again on replay. Now, we missed the actual hand pass. I personally would have given it against Carlton because the treatment handled, handed out from behind uh, warranted more than that free kick, I thought. Bradley, a high kick towards centre wing. Kernahan, the leaper, couldn't mark it. Dennis dives on top of it. He's claimed by Langford. And we'll have a ball up. There's going to be some very tired players in, under this 30-degree heat. In fact, I can see it's Michael Tuck getting treatment. They need him back on the ground. I can see in the distance the temperature actually is 31 degrees Celsius here in Melbourne. So there's going to be some very tired players. Play on, said the umpire, as it's uh, young Collins again. Good play by the young fella. Off he comes. That's 85 degrees Fahrenheit, in fact. And a lovely mark to Bacanara. He'll come back, this fella. He is too good a player to be down for long. Off he goes. The short pass is an ordinary one. Towards half foot. Peter Swab is in everything. He's tackled hard. Here's a chance. Kennedy was grabbed. He's got it. He hooks it back. He fires. It's close. It's oh. one point. Didn't miss by much. Michael Tuck, the face of a warrior there. He's been in many battles. They need him out there fighting this one as well this afternoon. Kick into play. Finds Robertson. Immediately he's held by Platten. The call is play on. It comes wide from Robertson's kick. Alvin towards the boundary line. Back comes Deepi and Domenico. And the ball crosses the boundary line. We'll have a throw in. Eight and a half minutes gone. Second term in the grand final. And Carlton 5-5. Lead Hawthorne 4-3. Carlton kicked the first three goals. Hawthorne the next four. And now Carlton have kicked the last two. The two goals kicked in this term. Down goes Bacanara. Tries to shuffle it out to support from Deer. Maley falls on top of the ball. Could have almost been penalised, Bob. And then it's interesting that uh, they're virtually playing without one wingman. And uh, it looks as though Glascott is going on and off the ball with Platten. But then he goes back to the wing. So Russo looks as though he's got Maley. Glascott looks as though he's got Platten. And virtually both sides without one wingman but this wingman is playing a ripper oh well we expect that of Dippy Domenico over to young Pritchard Pritchard with a long kick here's a chance for the Hawks Bacanara at the back with the big fist from Silvani heads for the line and in fact it is over the line forward pocket for Hawthorne look the way Silvani's punching the ball away they need more movement by the Hawthorne forward line leading yes. That's exactly right, Bob, and Brereton's not doing a lot at the moment. They need him by a beautiful hit out to Russo. Beautiful ruck work that was, and the ball is forced through for a, in fact, kicked through for a point.
by Peter Russo. So the Hawks move on to 4-4. Carlton on 5-5, seven points of difference in favour of the Blues. Almost ten minutes gone, second quarter. Alan Jeans looking on as Silvani kicks straight down the middle. On the outer side, Aitken takes a very good mark. Will it be paid? Yes, it will. Ian Aitken, the rookie of the season. With the ball on the outer side, looking for runners. Oh, that's an awkward hand pass. Taken away from Johnston out there by Green. I think he's hurt his leg out there. Green is holding his knee. Meantime, play goes on around him. Kennedy, sweeping hand pass out wide, taken by Curran. There's the other Kennedy. He couldn't control it. Johnston scrambles a kick forward. Glasgow's got it. Hurried hand pass intended for Bradley. Stood his ground brilliantly, despite the fact Russo was bearing down. Now it's with Aitken. Aitken on the outer side. Treads the light, fantastic. Goes down towards the pocket. Dorotich is in front, almost in the back down there. Kernahan behind the pack, but it's pushed across the boundary line, sensing the imminent danger. Langford was back there, and will have a boundary throw in alongside the behind post. It's like you. I thought it was a free kick to Dorotich, uh, Dennis. Uh, it's the way you call it. Michael Tuck still on the interchange bench. That's a rotten uh, blow, that, for Hawthorne. He means so much to the Hawthorne side. Here's a chance. Flascott on the left foot. A very, very hurried kick and he is forced into kicking it through for a behind. So the Blues move on to 5-6, and Michael Tuck is warming up on the boundary line, as is Russell Morris and Adrian Gleeson for Carlton. At the moment, it's 5-6 to 4-4, four, four, so one goal, two. It's only eight points the difference as Chris Mew. A long kick looking for Collins. Collins and Fraser Murphy. The little fellow Fraser Murphy nearly took that. Well done, Collins. Oh, a trip. Oh. Has to be a trip. And the umpire said exactly that. And Collins having a pretty good quarter. He's got to come back over the mark, though. There he is. He's still going to give that hand pass. Back it comes to Collins again, and he's doing well. Left foot, a shocking kick that was. Straightening the hands of David Rhys Jones on half back flank. He's doing a good job there. Yes. Great coaching by Robert Walls. He's thrown down the gauntlet to one of his very talented players this afternoon. And he's doing the job for him. This is Platten. Long kick into the forward line. Paul Deere is down there. Silvani relishes those situations over the top. And he goes thump. And it's out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. And the man standing in front of all of that was Kenny Hunter. And they came down on him pretty solidly. Boundary throw in at his side. Right half forward. That's for the Hawks. One down by Madden who's dominating the ruck. Picked up by Kennedy to Dean. Dean the high kick back towards centre field. P.P. Domenico, what a star he's been. Great mark. He's quick to play on across to Mew. He's had an off day. Mew, awkward looking kick. Sends it high down towards a contest. 30 metres out from their attacking goal. It's fisted away by the Carlton defence. Brereton, can he manufacture something now? He's deep in the pocket. Too much carry on the kick intended for Kennedy. He gets a second chance. He's confronted down there by Aitken. It spills across towards Curran. Curran dribbles one at the goal, and I think it may have hit the post. It did. Well, I thought Dermot probably should have had a shot then on the left foot from where he was, Bob. Well, it's hard to say. If he'd put it onto the chest of, the, of Kennedy like he was meaning to, it would have been good play. And it's probably easier from up here. There's a bit of pressure out there. Well, there's big Greg Deere and Adrian uh, Gleeson. Awesome, strong, bumping free oh. kick to Hawthorne. Could have been then for too high. But letting it go. They've been consistent at least. Yes, They're I agree. They're not giving any ticky touch with free kicks. They're really letting them have a dip. Well, that's the way to do it in a grand final too. As we see, 4-5 plays 5-6. Seven points the difference in favour of the Blues. There's enormous pressure out there. Deer, out wide it comes. Peter Curran. The half forward with the great marking uh, power. There's Silvani fisting away beautifully. But Peter Swab couldn't get on there. On behind play. It's a bit of a dust up going on on the ground there. Dermot Brereton's one of them. Peter Neen's another. Rhys James throws Dermot Brereton out of the pack. Enormous pressure going on at the moment. Rhys James doing an excellent job at the moment on Dermot. Hawthorne hanging in there. Carlton have had most of the play. There's Peter Dean. Left foot looking for Hunter. Centre wing again, the big fist away. Out it comes and the long kick comes right up towards the half forward line. That was by Chris Lang, but all oh, the big fly was by Elvin. He couldn't take it. Ian Aiken dashes away out of defence. Onto the left foot he goes. Gary Ayres from behind, punches it away from Meldrum. Oh, gee, they're, they're tired already, those players. Collins, a beautifully directed kick to Swab. Now, was he off? No, said the umpire. He plays on to the man of the moment. Oh. Dippier Domenico, 50 metres out, fires Dermot Brereton. Really a mark. Rhys Jones, brilliant play, forces it through for a point. Got a free kick. Uh, 
He didn't play it, Ian Robertson. He had a good view of it. The no. Enormous pressure, though, Bob. No free kick. No, I good effort. Good. Therese Jones ran straight in, but he did not watch in the replay. He's inspired deeply at a minute ago. And what about the move of Reese Jones? Challenging Reese Jones, Robert Walls, and he's responding, Bobby. He certainly has. He's uh, put the Burton. Burton's missed some sitters, though. He has the kick from Johnston put down. No, he wasn't after he kicked the ball. Jenke claiming the mark at half back. It's played. Ray Jenke just wired at centre half back. Sends the ball out towards centre wing in front of the southern stand. Schwab to Russo. Russo running towards half forward. Brereton on a lead. He's in front. Reese Jones stepped back and then came at him and pissed it away. Brereton's oh. claim. They battle after the ball. A that is murder. I wouldn't be surprised if Brereton had Reese Jones by the arm out there. Maley's got the ball on the outer side wing. He's getting some rough treatment, Brereton and Dennis. There goes Naley with a high kick. Kernahan edged out of the contest behind a chance for Meldrum. One bounce. The speedster's away. Pulls it back. Intended for Hunter. And Hunter drifting in, ghosting him behind the pack, has taken the mark. Well, it would be interesting to see Brereton in replay. Meldrum pulling it back brilliantly. Yes, it's good as he'd been a free kick to Doritich anyway, but it mattered not because Hunter... Easily leading Chris Mew. Gee, Carlton have missed some sitters, Bob. They have missed some absolute sitters. And it one goal, three to Ken Hunter. Well, against the side, Doritich has missed a couple. Kenny Hunter's missed three, as you said. And against the side like Hawthorne, you can't afford to miss too many up around the goals. It could be costly in the long run. Now, here's Tommy Alvin, who's full of running. He's getting well away from Bacanara. And he kicks long and high. Dorrit hits from behind, can't take the mark. In goes Mew, fists it straight to Gleeson. Gleeson's caught, drops the ball. Play on as Ayers gets it wide. Russo to Langford, that's magnificent defence. As it comes out to Jenke, Jenke wants to go and have a run. He has a bounce, he runs, has another bounce. He's on centre wing, he's still going, Ray Jenke. A hand pass to Kennedy, back to Jenke, should have kept going. Back it comes to Pritchard. Pritchard to half forward, Peter Swab playing well. Caught, ducks back, smothered off the boot. Tried to do a little bit too much. In goes Bacanara, he dives in the ball. Alvin dives on top of him. And what pressure football this is in a grand final. Yes, I think the umpires are deliberately not picking out little trivial free kicks like that. Uh, the only one that I really thought they missed was Brereton's uh, back up there, but uh, letting the game go. Up goes Madden, dominating the ruck. He gets it down to Aitken. Aitken's kick, half blanketed. It goes out towards the other side boundary and runs out of bounds. So 17 and a half minutes gone. Second term and Calvin lead 5-7-37 to Hawthorne's 4-6-30. Hawthorne's record in 1987. The second best in the league. The best handed in by their opponents this afternoon. Johnston going through with courage. Chopped off by Curran. Good hand pass to Green, to Bacanara. Over the top, the hand pass. No one in particular. Glasgow, oh, brilliant vision. Right across the face of goal. He releases Reese Jones. Runners on the grandstand side, the Mimbo side of the ground. Taken by Meldrum. Meldrum, ample time. Looks up. He's jogging at the present time, assessing the options. Not a lot on. He kicks it high in the direction of Dia. Kernahan came and gave a contest. This is Dia running away with the ball. Already some of these players looking a little tired as Dia sends it back towards half well, forward. Carlton uh, not doing well on the forward line. Dippy Adamenico, the lock kick is a chance. Yes, a mark. Peter Curran, 20 metres out from goal. What a beautiful kick that's. Best on ground at the moment by one mile is Robert Dippy Adamenico. But that Hawthorne defence was sensational a moment ago when Meldrum came down the ground. He had no one to kick it to because the men were covered. There's the kick. And, oh, a shocker. A miss. 20 metres out. And it's now Hawthorne's turn to miss. And Peter Curran's kicked three points. One goal, three to Ken Hunter. Three points to Peter Curran. Both sides missing sitters. Reese Jones goes towards the outer side in the bright sunshine. Aitken goes across and takes the mark for the Blues. The Blues and the Hawks going at it this afternoon in a classic grand final. Around the outer side goes the kick into the path of Gleeson. It bounces high out there. Deer arrives on the scene and punches the ball across the boundary line. That's Paul Deer. Boundary throw in outer side. Carlton lead by six points, approaching 20 minutes. The margin at quarter time, three points. Hawthorne's way. 
Off the hands of the pack on the outer side. Langford dragged off his kick, scrambles it forward towards centre wing, and a very good mark is taken by Kennedy. That was the top mark. He gave his man one metre start then, and John Kennedy took the mark, a 30 metre penalty. He doesn't worry about it. Over to Gary Ayres. He runs to the centre of the ground. He kicks long, a 60 metre kick. Brereton, Rich Jones. Rich Jones, too good. A lovely mark. And he's on top of Durban at the moment. But a shocking kick because there's two Hawthorne men. Abbott. Dippy had a minute ago playing a sensational game. Looking for Green. He probably should have kicked it. Abbott's there. Not enough pace. Meldrum gets it over to Kennedy. Kennedy, oh, slow to kick it. Gets his kick it eventually, though, to half forward. It's fisted away. Good defence by the Hawks. Leeson runs onto the left foot. A long kick. He's looking out there for Naley. Oh, too good, Naley. He takes it away beautifully from Langford. He straightens up, but full marks to Langford. Great right coming back Langford. and putting him under pressure. Great play, Naley, to win the ball in the first place. And if we watch on replay, Naley taking away from Langford. And now Langford really showing pace for a big man, lunging and just putting him off at the last minute. Short pass into Ayers. Ayers around the outer side. Mark is taken out there by Paul Deer. He's away. Swings it down towards half forward. What a good kick. Curran in best position. Great mark. It was a good kick. Curran took the mark. Kennedy wants to play on. It'll come back to Curran. Curran on the 50 metre line. Listen to that crowd. It had to be brought back. He couldn't yeah. allow the advantage on that occasion. No way. It was a great mark. It was kicked to his advantage, but he really had to arch his back. Peter Curran. This will test him. High kick. Hangs in the air. Gorich hits him from the side. Fists it towards the goal line, in effect. I think he was trying to force a point. It's gone out of bounds. And spoiling has been the keynote as far as Carlton's defence has been concerned today. Silvani and Gorich, really big fists. And McKenzie's at full forward. Uh, is Madden off the, ball, off the ground. And uh, picking him up is Greg Deere. And Paul Abbott is doing the ruck work for Hawthorne. And I think that's... And Morris has just come on the ground. He's limping a bit. And off is uh, Greg Deere's younger brother, Paul Deere. So a lot of moves being made, but that's good to give Deere a bit of a breather, give Abbott plenty of work. There's a great tackle, an enormous tackle. And uh, Justin Madden, they're with a, such a hot day, they're giving the big fella a bit of a breather, I would think. 22 minutes gone, second quarter. The difference is seven points only in favour of the Blues. And the amount of play they had early, they probably should be further in front. Hawthorne have fought back brilliantly. There's Doritic. Oh, hooks it back. That's dangerous play because Platten's there and Kennedy. Platten in after it. Is it holding the ball? No. Or is it? No. It's held to him. Set up by Ian Robinson. The bounce will take place. Half forward for Hawthorne. Could have been a little lucky there. Doritic hitting it the wrong way, Pete. Carlton's record against Hawthorne. Done pretty well over the years, as you can see. This is Schwab number 30 at close quarters. Got it to Platten. High kick down towards the kickoff line. Brereton. Great work by Morris, but Brereton couldn't hang on. And down goes Meldrum down there. Just not holding his mark, no. Morris keeps Silvani out. Didn't hug it in. Reese Jones with the ball. That's not a bad sort of a kick given what was up ahead by Reese Jones. He dribbles it out of bounds. I tell you what, the Hawthorne back line has dropped right on top of the Carlton forward line at the moment. And, uh, well, actually, both defences on top, you'd have to say, at this stage, as we see the ball on centre wing. Ewers is still on Hunter. Kernahan has been picked up. Lake has done a marvellous job on Kernahan. And there's young Pritchard. Darren Pritchard to half forward. Kennedy, good play. Oh, good play. Dippier Domenico to Shepard. John Kennedy, a short one. What can Brereton do? He's got it. In the back. It has oh, to be. Dear. No, it's not, said the umpire. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at a little bit differently. There's Silvani to McKenzie. McKenzie on centre wing. A hand pass to little Fraser Murphy. A long floating drop punt. Hunter from behind. No mark. Beautiful play. Morris has done his knee again. There's Kernahan. Can he grab it? The Carlton captain picks it up. Fouls. Well, I think that's the fortune. In, uh, in that case, there's no doubt in my mind that it was a free kick to Dermot Brewerton. It was allowed to be called play on. Mew on replay couldn't quite take it. Nearly lost possession. Hunter brings out the ball. Hooks it across. An awkward bounce for Kernahan. 
and he just kicked it in fresh air and drew a chance. Great goal, Stephen Kernahan, but a little bit of luck and poor umpiring for mine. Number 23 for Hawthorne. He is not going to get a free kick at the moment. Let's see if the Hawks can come back there. Two goals behind. Russell Green. Out comes Brereton. No mark. Well done, Elvin. Oh, beautiful football, Tommy Elvin. Great tackle, Brereton. Oh, no! I cannot believe that. A beautiful tackle, Dermot Brereton. He's doing the block. And I cannot believe that is inconsistency. umpire of all time. Even the crowd have stood up and hooted the umpire. Morris is off the ground, Russell Morris. He won't take any further part in the game, I wouldn't think. He is, the knee has gone on him. That was a very poor decision, as we see the kick coming down to half forward. I feel sorry for Brereton. As we see Aiken oh. trying to appeal for the free kick. The Hawks are in there hard. There's uh, Dennis heading for the boundary line. Kicked away, airs cops one in the head. Dippier Domenico has been sensational. Grabs his opponent. Some beautiful backing up, some great tactics, a lot of pressure, and this is a great grand fight. Yes, last year's game was a visit. Here's Russell Morris. The clash between these two sides, a one-sided affair, won by Hawthorne easily last year. It was a poor game of football, but my word, this is all different this afternoon. Great game of footy as Dorotich tries to crash his way through. He's dragged down. Down goes Fraser Murphy. Aitken misses the ball. Pritchard's in there on top of it. Back comes Fraser Murphy. And the umpire's going to ball it up. Bounce down on the centre wing. Carlton 6-8. Hawthorne 4-8. Approaching 26 and a half minutes. Bounce from umpire Robinson. Dorotich doing the ruck work to good effect too. He got it down to Fraser Murphy. He paddles it through the pack. He was held without it. He'll take a free kick on centre wing. Well, Carlton, I suppose the knock on them has been that they're susceptible to ferocious tackling and certainly they've been challenged by their coach before this game they had to come out and meet the challenge and they're doing that at the moment diving on top of the ball down there is big mckenzie and we're going to have another ball up no it's oh. a that oh. the ball. mckenzie should have got the free kick in the first place well michael tuck this is good news for hawthorne is warming up on the boundary line about to come back into the fray chris mew at center half back after that free kick a very very hot day the players already would be feeling tired there's a lovely mark to John Turridge. It'll be a, a play on. He got the 15 metres, didn't wait for it. Over to Silvani. Silvani centre of the ground. His danger for Hawthorne. Kernahan. Jakey, oh, he's being well beaten at the moment, Kernahan, by Chris Langford, who's playing a magnificent game in defence. He is playing a really top game. Out to the best man on the ground in Dippier Domenico. Dippy goes in after it again. He's got it. Last year's Brownlow medalist, a beautiful hand pass. Collins, he'll give one over the top. No, he won't. Off he goes, and he kicks it to half four. Gary Bacadara's got it. He wants to give a hand pass. There's no one there, so he ducks away and kicks it out to Brereton. Reese Jones, Brereton, a beautiful mark. Off he goes, half forward. He fires a goal, and it's a bad kick. He's missed and put it through for a point. He possibly could have sent it, and he had loose men there. But it's you a think final. he should have played on, Pete? Probably not. He maybe could have kicked it from there, Bob. But there's the lovely mark. On replay, uh, we're not going to see it now. We saw the mark. Here's Dean kicking in. Going towards the outer side. Oh, great leap by Silvani and great reflexes too as he hit the ground and like a panther, he reeled the ball back in. Boots to the outer side. Knocked away by Jenke out there. Winning in the race is Big Abbott. Soccer's off the ground. There's the siren for half time. And half time in the 87 grand final. Carlton leads 6 8 to 4 9. That's a margin of 11 points. Alan Jeans is coming down. Obviously, he'd be a little disappointed. Carlton kicked the first three goals of the game. He's a man, I think, who would be very disappointed. Well, that quarter, Dennis, three goals, three to seven points. Seven and, uh, points. Dermot Brereton having a word to the umpire on that occasion, and I'm not one bit surprised. No. I thought he was murdered. So do I, Bob. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't know what he's going to do to get a kick, but a, a great game of football, a great grand final this at the moment. The players, there's young Ian Aiken, very tired already, and it's 31 degrees temperature day, but uh, a very even contest. Both sides down a bit on the forward line. There's star forwards 
Brereton and Kernahan aren't firing back lines on top, Bob. Well, Brereton's had his chances. He could have taken marks, but he's dropped them. But I, as I said before, I thought there were times when he should have been given the free kick and there was just none forthcoming. And it finished up with Carlton on one occasion taking the ball to the other end of the ground and kicking a goal. But I suppose that's football. There must have been times I thought that McKenzie should have been free kicked and it went the other way. But uh, Brereton in particular, I think, has been given a pretty rough deal. So, a test of stamina is coming up. Hot conditions at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. It's been a hot game of football. Carlton lead by 11 points in the major break. It's 6-8 to 4-9. Welcome back to the VFL Sports Centre as we see the huge crowd in attendance at the MCG for the Speedo VFL Grand Final of 1987. Let's check the scoreline at half time. We see that Hawthorne had a three point margin in their favour at the end of the opening quarter. Now at half time it's 11 points in favour of Carlton leading 6-8-44 to 4-9-33. These are the goal kickers for Carlton. Johnson has two. Hunter, Bradley, Dorotich and Kernahan one apiece and for the Hawks. Kennedy two. Platten one and Deerpeer Domenico one. They didn't add a go goal to their scoreline at the second quarter. Let's take you back to the MCG now for the highlights of that quarter. And here's Bobby Skilton to talk about these highlights and certainly a game of many highlights, the first half. Yes, some interesting moves as we spoke earlier. Um, both sides playing without a wingman. Um, both wingman on one side of the ground virtually picking up the opposite lover. So they've got two rovers on uh, the ball and no wingman on one side of the ground. But Carlton having the more effective forward so far. We just saw Doherty put one through and the umpires have really let play go. And in this situation, I think a lot of the times that they've let it go, it has penalised the Hawthorne side. But there's no excuses. You make your own luck in situations like that. And Carlton are in front because they've led to the ball on so many occasions. DP Domenico has been absolutely superb. He and Chris Langford have been by far the most outstanding players on the ground. But I give DP Domenico my vote. Paul Meldrum, who voted so well in the Brownlow, that was all early in the season. He got that ball across to Ken Hunter. Hunter missed this particular one, and in fact, he has kicked one goal three so far in the game. Curran backing back, taking it right on the line, hooked over the shoulder, and we see a great goal here by Kernahan. Doesn't take possession, just kicks it off the ground in midair, and it's through for full points. Andrew Collins, another good player for Hawthorne, gets it to Bacanara in towards the centre, this way, that way, and then it on to Brereton, who I think foolishly played on, and then kicked it out of bounds. Stats so far to half time, we see a three kick advantage in favour of Hawthorne, one in favour of the Marks, in favour of Carlton, handball 13 in favour of Hawthorne. So the possession all in favour of Hawthorne, scoring shot though 14 to 11 in favour of Carlton, and at the moment it's an 11 point advantage to the Blues. Football, Kent. Outstanding game of football. The conditions may tell the story of this game, I fancy, in the second half. OK, thanks very much, Dennis. In fact, we'll come back to you. I'd like to get your expert assessment of how the back lines have been playing. Well, it's been a game of back lines, I think. Certainly, both back lines have been very disciplined. Carlton's feature, I think, has been their punching away. Silvani seems to love that, over the top and pumping the ball towards the boundary line. I thought Dorotic caused a few problems, as did Hunter early in the game on the forward line for Carlton. And the Hawks' defence settled then, and they played very well indeed in that second quarter. But invariably, Peter McKenna, forwards find it difficult in final round matches to be dominant players and if you've got a dominant forward you're well on the way to winning a match i think particularly early uh, in, in the match dennis but uh, at the moment the two big name players the two champion center half forwards are a little bit down dermot broden has been dropping his marks and steve kernahan really has been well beaten by length but i've been pretty impressed with the endeavors of uh, peter curran on the forward line for hawthorne i think he's played fairly well but an R is down at the moment both back lines well on top of the respective forward lines hawthorne could do with a little man or snooping around the goal square for when that big fist of Silvani comes away. But at the moment, uh, Bob, it's a very, very even contest. Yes, I think you said coming off the ground that fitness was going to play a big part in this game. And they already look some tired boys. It's 31 degrees, and out there in the middle of the MCG, you can bet it's quite a few uh, degrees more than that. It's, it's very hard physically for these players. 
and just how they've trained through the week, week how their legs are, just how they can come up after half time. And it'll take a lot of spirit from both sides to really play this one right out to the finish. So 11 points the margin, half time. Carlton Widdop, let's go down to Barry Bree. Dennis, thank you. Both coaches, I think, have got a few problems at uh, half time. They've both got key forwards that aren't really contributing at this stage. Brereton not having good runs. Steve Kernahan being well beaten at this stage by Langford. So if I was Robert Walls or Alan Jeans, I'd certainly be looking at ways to get those key players back into this game. Obviously, with the score the way it is, it's a very low scoring game. Both defences on top. So which coach makes that winning move in this third quarter is going to weigh a long way to winning this game. Right, thanks, Barry. Let's go back now to Ken Hose in our central position, Ken. Thanks, Dennis. OK, we're going to take a break right now on the Speedo Grand Final of 1987. After the break, the experts select the best mark and the great goal of the 87 season. Right throughout this season of 1987, we've conducted the search for the great Aussie goal and we've seen some great shots at the big sticks, including four great pressure goals that have either drawn or won games after the final siren. The list on grand final day has been cut to ten of the very best. Let's take a look at the goals of the year. He's back in there to put pressure on Francis. He does it very well, Bruce Linder. Just about kicked this one. He goes for home. It's there! Finish it off with goals. They need more work like that from Brown. Starsevich behind Hughes, but roving the lane. Here he goes, through the eye of the needle. Can he cap it off? He can! This possess, grabbed by Langford. Out wide is Murphy. Against the and Murphy fine. He might kick this. 55 metres, David Murphy, a brilliant kick. It's a goal! Steps at that time, across comes Carroll, onto the left foot, it doesn't matter with, with foot you like with Carroll, it's still about 50 or 60 metres, Nagel takes it off the hands of the back, goes forward, four goals so far, and two, five goals to Merv Nagel. He couldn't quite take the mark, Grain swoops on the ball, steady, 55 metres out, now towards the 50 metre line, Grain goes forward, lovely kick, good points to Jeff Grain. Now he can, Bailey, clean bowl, gets the handball out to Lovett. Lovett running well, looping handball over the stretch. Stretch inside, centre half forward, goes for goal with a long one. It may bounce through, it does. A fantastic goal kicked by Stephen Stretch. Tony Lovett coming in for goal number 100. He'll never forget it's a goal! A great effort by the young champion it was. Lester Smith there to back him up. Kicks it wide towards the wing. Kappa, now Fripp. Comes through, Bays it is, Bays, the kick, kick is a goal! And every player on the mark of North Melbourne's waving. And look at the goal up by the concentration as Kernahan moves in and he's put it right through the centre. And that is the mark of a champion. It's Melbourne in full flight and Dean puts it out. The back bounce, famous Flower, with the ball beautifully. Flower goes towards goal! Well, there we are, 10 of the great goals of season 1987. Let's see which three the commentators think are the best. Well, this is going to be tough. I'll start. I'll say David Murphy of the Sydney Swans, Mark Bays of the Swans. What do you think, Bob? Well, I thought Mark Bays was, was the best goal, and I think David Murphy was second, and uh, Lindu of Geelong third. The position of power, Peter McKenna, the casting vote. Well, I thought for sheer team-lifting performance, uh, Dennis, I thought the one of uh, David Murphy for the Sydney Swans, a great mark, and off he went straight away, 55-metre goal. It wasn't so spectacular as regards some of the others, but I thought it was the best goal. OK, David Murphy gets it from the Swans, Ken. All right, and a good decision. Thanks, fellas. Well, if we had some great goals during the season, it's fair to say the marks have been absolutely sensational. Again, we've cut the final list to just ten of the very best in our search for the great Aussie mark. Take a look at these. This breaks away. Oh, what a mark! Bennett, one kilometre in the air. Smith goes round that outer side. Target over there. Oh, look at that! away to Bruns. Up to half forward. Dorothy back in defence. Oh, High floater. Grant Murray is Kappa. Kappa! Oh, one of the marks of the year. Murray Kappa up early. And still about 15 minutes.
minutes with the win for the Hawks. Geelong here, there's five against Kernahan, Kernahan's marked it! Oh, a Herculean effort! Goes to the outer side, magnificent mark is taken out there by Burns. What a great mark that was. Now, Kappa, a big chance here on Langford. Oh, dear, oh, what a mark! Oh! I was all set to call a free kick, he sort of hung over the back and the ball fell into his hands. What's this? Well, there we go, 10 top marks. Let's do it again. Let's see what the commentators thought about those. That really is a great collection of marks. I'll go for Dermot Brereton. No, I won't. I think I'll go for Warwick Kappa because he's in there so often. I'll take Kappa in the qualifying final because it was an odd mark and perhaps Brereton's second best. What do you think, Pete? Well, I thought the classic mark was the one against Fitzroy where Kappa went up. He didn't have the hands on the shoulders, and I think that's most important. It was a great mark, so I'd go for Kappa against Fitzroy. Bob? Yes, well, I know that you've both gone for Brereton uh, as second choice, and uh, one of Kappa's marks was against Hawthorne, one was against Fitzroy, as far as your choices are concerned. And were, the, the ten marks of the year were far better, in my opinion, than the ten goals. But my mark of the year, and I think I've got the casting vote because of the fact yes, that you're married, yeah. I'm going for Dermot Brereton because I thought he took his in a pack, across the pack, and it's a lot harder to do it in those circumstances. So Dermot Brereton, Ken, the mark of the year. OK, thanks very much, Bob. We'll take a break. Be back with you in just a moment from the VFL Sports Centre. Towards centre half forward, his target. Don't score! What a great mark! Reigning VFL champions Hawthorne started off this 1987 season much as they finished the last one by defeating Carlton. The season has gone as they would expect for this Hawthorne side that has been such a dominant force in football in the last decade. The Hawks won 17 of their 22 home and away matches, falling victim to newcomers, the West Coast Eagles, twice, with additional losses to Sydney, Footscray, and Melbourne. At the end of the home and away rounds, the Hawks were second on the table, considered by many to be the best spot from which to make the run for the flag. The Hawks won premierships in 1976, 78 and 83 from second place. And if they can add this one to the list, it will be Hawthorne's first back-to-back -back premiership and the tally of premierships will move to seven. In the final series, Hawthorne had a comprehensive win over Sydney in the qualifying final, finishing with a 99-point advantage and a forward line that was devastating. Carlton and Hawthorne met in the second semi-final at VFL Park and they were unable to reproduce their previously brilliant form, going down to the Blues by 15 points. But this Hawthorne side is never down and out. If their ability under pressure was ever questioned, that myth was dispelled with the classic fight back that last week saw them claw their way back into this grand final by defeating the courageous demons after the final siren had sounded. For the Hawks, a last-minute desperate lunge at glory. That seems to be the sort of stuff that these champions are made of in their quest for the VFL Premiership of 1987. Back live at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Gleeson and McKenzie on the bench for Carlton. Paul Deere and Morris for Hawthorne. Robbie Flower looks on. 11 points to margin, Carlton's way after they trail by three points at quarter time. Umpire Ian Robinson. And away we go. Counting down the minutes to the 87 Premiership. It's one out by Madden. A chance for Schwab met solidly by Kernahan. It spills wide at the pack. It's taken by Langford. Hurried kick out wide. The ball bouncing out towards right half foot. Gathered brilliantly by Kennedy. He's claimed. Gets the hand pass away, though, despite the tackle of Dean. Running onto the loose ball, it's Platten. Platten on the boundary line. Pulls it back. Curran couldn't hang on. He's going to get the free kick down there. I think Swab's in trouble in the centre. He's in the hands of the trainers. Seems to be OK. Shaken, but not stirred. As Curran has the ball inside 50. Not a bad spot to kick from here, Dennis. He's got the shade of the stands. Uh, not, I don't mean from the sun. I'm meaning from the breeze. Let's see what he can do. Peter Curran. They desperately need an early goal. 
starts it on its way. It swings right to left. They can test in the square. And once again, the evidence of that big Carlton fist puts it through for a behind. That's the big fist of Stephen Silvani once again, and he's done it superbly all day. Reese Jones to bring the ball back into play. Well, on that half-back line, there's the big fist of the Hawks on this occasion. And, oh, Platten magnificently done. Johnny Platten, he runs to the boundary, fires. Cross the face. Silvani's there for Carlton, and is forced over the line. It was not out on the full set, the boundary umpire. What brilliant play that was by the Brownlow medalist of 1987, Johnny Platten, Alan Jeans. Jenky is on Meldrum. Ayers coming up the ground onto Dennis. Matten gets it to the ground. Took away by Robertson out of defence. And, oh, geez, played a good game. Chris Langford on Kernahan. Langford, oh, dangerous, but it comes off. He finds Greg Deere. Deere to Pritchard. And the young Tasmanian runs to goal. It's a high floating kick. Over the back, here's a chance for the Hawks. Was it a push out? It was. Free kick to Carlton. It's a free kick to Carlton to Justin Madden. It was too high. No, anyone could reach up that high to Justin Madden's shoulders as it comes towards halfback. The sun in the eyes, I think. Oh, kick by Langford. Oh, here's a chance. Curran. Oh, boy, lots of fortune. Well, Chris Langford's kicked it in the air, Bobby, and it's fallen into the hands of Peter Curran. Yes, Curran is at full forward now. His opponent, Stephen Silvani, not with him on that occasion. And the luck is a fortune. Uh, but uh, what a great game Langford's playing. Curran, in deliberately. Pretty good. Goal to the Hawks. Karen kicked his first goal of the game after three points, and that would lift his confidence. And so, on a day, we see Langford kicking the ball in midair, and unattended temporarily Peter Curran. Shot from behind the goal. The replay shows the ball going right through the centre, and the goal umpire didn't have to move. Peter Curran, first goal of the third term. Back in the middle, one down by Dia. Strange to think a grand final can turn on a kick out of midair. Trying to repeat the dose down there was Tuck. A chance behind now for Brereton. The hand pass goes across the face of goal. Alvin was in there battling hard to his Reese Jones. Body is being committed. Bradley's hand pass, not a particularly good one. Working hard at the base of all of that Hawthorne. They've got numbers there, but they're not moving the ball at the present time. Schwab a chance. Thought he was held without it. No free kick. Naley emerges with the ball. Beautiful kick into the path of Hunter. Couldn't quite get there. It beat him by half a stride. Down he goes. Doritich is there. Abbott came out and upended Hunter as the ball is scrambled towards the boundary line by New. Kenny Hunter is hurt and will have a boundary throw in on the other side. On replay again. Shoulder to shoulder. And he may have hit his head when he hit the ground. He wasn't the Hunter there. Half back line this is for Hawthorne. Half forward for the Blues. Tremendous pressure on now in this game. It's grabbed by Paul Abbott. Back into half forward. Bradley, a hand pass, a wild one. It might have been touched off the boot that kick. Is it a free kick for Hawthorne? No, said the umpire as the play on as the ball is kicked out of defence. And it's Omar to Kennedy, to Platten. Platten slow to get rid of it, but he just gets his boot to it. Russell Green. Ah, oh, good play, Meldrum. Too good. Beautifully done. Hooks it back magnificently to Kernahan. And that was top play by Paul Meldrum. Yes, excellent play. And shouldn't have been hand passed to Platten. It put Platten under pressure. And out of that pressure, it resulted in Meldrum doing superb football to get it across to Stephen Kernahan. Steve Kernahan has had a quiet day. Six kicks. And a big task for Stephen Kernahan today. There's always a lot of pressure on the big name players in particular. He's got a kick from about 48 metres here. With the drop punt. He is a beautiful kick for goal. Normally there's a long floating drop punt. It is close. It is a goal. Two goals for Stephen Kernahan. Uh, it's been a superb performance by his opponent, but uh, that was great play as we watch on replay now. Meldrum wins out against two opponents, and a beautiful pass onto the left foot, and right onto the chest of the diving Turnerhan, who made no mistake with a lovely kick. Stephen Turnerhan recruited from Glenel, 49 games. Back in the middle, Hawthorne looking for a quick reply. Tuck is over the ball, scrambled out by Deepia Domenico. 
about 40 metres out from goal. Brereton takes the mark on his chest. He's finally held one. I can't help thinking, Bobby, that this man is the key to this game. If he starts taking marks, I really think they can win. He's got the green boots on now. Uh, so let's hope from a Hawthorne point of view, only three kicks, three marks and one handball so far. Well, Dermot Brereton from 40 metres out. He's kicked a lot of goals in his time, but that's not one. In fact, it is very close to out of bounds on the full, I think, but it's a point. Bad miss. The green boots aren't helping at the moment. 5-11 to 7-8. And Carlton got a loose man out here in Shane Robertson. Half-back flank. Off he goes. He's a left footer as he brings it wide. It's a beautiful pass to Richard Dennis. Dennis wants to handball it. Off he goes and kicks a high one towards half forward. Front position. It's taken by the horse. Chris Mew. Oh, he dives on the ball. I thought Fraser Murphy was going to get away with that one. Madden's there. There's Mew. Grabbed by Bradley. Looking for Johnston. Johnston takes a dive. It's Peter Schwab was up in a moment ago, but he gets his kick to this one towards centre wing. Brereton from behind. Can't take the mark. Lee Stones is there, and he's oh. held said the umpire on centre wing, and David Lee Stones will take this kick. That's the problem, of course, when you let the game go. It wasn't particularly tough for a kick, but it was awarded the umpire standing right alongside. That sounds a problem with the ball coming in. This is Fraser Murphy off the hands of the pack. A high kick camped under the ball. Hunter! Play on is the call. Diving in his Aitken. It must have been touched. Falling on top of the ball is Meldrum. And we're going to have a ball up, and Hunter can't believe his misfortune. Umpire Rowan saw was just indicating to Hunter that it was touched upfield. Wait for the bounce then, about 35 metres out from Carlton's attacking goal. They lead 7-8 to 5-11. One down by Dorotich. Richard Dennis out of the pack, he's missed. Almost the opportunist goal. He bobbed up on the end of that one and missed narrowly. 7-9 to 5-11. Approaching eight minutes in the term. This is Ayers kicking in. Packed MCG, he comes to the member side of the ground. Off hands, it's taken by Madden. Awkward looking kick, Fraser Murphy couldn't hang on. In goes Langford, runs into a dead end. Naley, Meldrum now, 40 metres out from goal. He stabs, he's off target, it bounces out of bounds in the pocket. Tentative kick. Well, that was a very poor kick for Meldrum because he was under no pressure whatsoever. As we see, Robbie Walls wouldn't be too happy with that kick. Eight and a half minutes gone, third quarter. Most people would imagine that Carlton, with a couple of weeks' break, will certainly finish on stronger. There's Dennis having another shot at goal. He's missed again, so he's leading the ball well. He's winning the ball well, though. He's uh, played a pretty good, solid game today, Richard Dennis, particularly in the first quarter. Faded a little bit in the second quarter and didn't do much, but he's back in business again, and Carlton holding sway at the present moment. Chris Mew. He and Chris Langford sharing the kicking in duties today. That's a beautiful long kick. He's looking for Collins, but Kernahan was there to fist it away from Collins. Great play, Kernahan. But he took his eye off it. He lost it at the last uh, second. And the ball was eventually forced over the line. Unfortunately for Kernahan, he moved faster than the ball. Well, he's put in the... But he distance. did well to get it there, Pete. 30 odd degrees it is at the moment. These players will be very, very tired. Richard Dennis was held. Could have been a free kick to that player, but the umpire said no, and the throw in will take place again. I think when you look at it, though, let as many free kicks go for both sides. Well, it's on half forward for Carl, the Hawks. And it's a free kick to Hawthorne for over the neck, and it will be taken by Abbott. Abbott hasn't had a lot of football in recent weeks, so he'll be pretty fresh. Paul Deere, uh, Greg Deere, I should say, centre of the pack. It's a free kick going which way, uh, Carlton's way, in fact, for being held was Robertson. Uh, set 15 metres, no. Shane Robertson, centre of the ground, kicks it wide. Mew and Hunter, Mew the big fist away. David Rhys Jones gets away from Russell Green. Beautiful skills by Rhys Jones as he kicks long. Dorotich is there and Jenky and Ray Jenky packs in front of the pack to take a good mark. Gutsy mark that one from the Hawthorne defender. It's a battle of wills at the moment. Both back lines standing up well. Jenky comes towards the member side of the ground. Collins, the hand pass over the top intended for Kennedy, but it's rushed out of bounds by Bradley. Carlton do look better at the moment, Dennis. Yep. Bob Hawke. Sitting there with Russ, Russ Oakley. Boundary throw in, centre wing. Madden opposed to Deer. Madden again has the call, but he's going to be penalised. Free kick will go to Deer. Bit tough on Madden. A lot of body work there. And now 15 metres. 
Dia doesn't want it. Plays on by hand. to Pritchard unattended in the middle. Now he's away. One bounce. Running down towards half forward. Goes towards the pocket. Curran's in front. Silvani in close attendance. Clears the pair of them. Alvin is first back. Being pursued by Brereton around the outer side. They still battle. Down goes Alvin. It bounced obligingly out there for Curran. Gets it across to support. Scrambled forward around the outer side by Russo. Grabbed by Green. High kick down towards full forward. Behind it's knocked away by Aitken. In goes Tuck. Tuck's over the ball. Clever hand pass in the square. Kennedy goal. Three goals to John Kennedy. And a magnificent captain's effort by Michael Tuck. Had the ball punched away by Aitken, but recovered beautifully. And it was a wonderful piece of play by Brewitt to chase after Alvin. Wide on the half-back flank. The replay shows Tuck get the ball out to Kennedy. And Kennedy puts it through for his third goal. And it's 52 to 47. Five points the margin between the sides. So Hawthorne back there with a real chance. I think the incredible strength of Michael Tuck was shown in that incident in the goal square there and not many people realize how strong he is there's Naley hasn't done a lot today Mark Naley there's the Hawks that relentless pressure oh gee you never write this team up there fantastic as is Carlton two best sides in the BFL competition this it's year a great contest it is a great contest the hit outs well Justin Madden with his enormous height but Greg Gears battling very very well there's Madden getting it out to Alvin now Bradley and young Pritchard, Bradley knocks it on, great pace, Bradley, he straightens up, he fires, it comes back, and he goals. I think it's very hard to stop goals like that. The sheer talent of Craig Bradley getting away from Pritchard. Young Pritchard's done well in this quarter, but taking full advantage of that ball coming out there, the skill and pace on replay, a perfect shot of Craig Bradley. Not only does he win the ball well, he finishes it off to perfection, and that was a perfect shot of a great piece of play by Craig Bradley. They go and goal for goal in the grand final. Run down by Madden this time. Kernahan cleverly across to Johnston. His progress was halted. Gets it back to Kernahan. He's playing by Langford. Scrambles the ball out wide. Robertson's got the run of it. Tries to shake a tackle. Collins well played. The tackle in the Shepherd. Ayers drives towards the outer side. Foot race towards the boundary line. Aitken and Tuck, it's out of bounds. Youth versus age on that occasion. Exactly what I was thinking, Bob, because... That's Mike, the age. And there's the age, a man of about, what, 34? But I say that with uh, great respect and admiration. 35. Fantastic. 35 years of age, Michael Tuck, and he looks a different man without that long sleeve. But who'd wear long sleeves might be today? the broken nose that changes his appearance. Well, there's Naley. Off he goes, the South Australian champ, as he kicks it high. He's under enormous pressure. Hawthorne Terriers cannot get there, and the ball beats him over the line on half-back flank. Now, at the moment, Carlton just holding sway, 58 to 47, so that's 11 points the difference at the 14-minute mark, third quarter. I don't think Hawthorne... I think Hawthorne would fancy themselves in this contest if they were with Carlton at three-quarter time. They wouldn't want to let the Blues... Get a couple of quick goals. Look at the marks. Nothing in that. The marking jewels. Abbott doing the ruck work for Hawthorne. There's Collins doing some good work in defence. Towards centre wing. Two Carlton players flew against each other. And Madden with the long arms is able to take the mark. It's a big advantage, that great height of his. As he brings it towards half forward. The Hawthorne defenders try and get away with a beautiful play. Dorotic. Oh, gee, the bounce to Melton. This is a goal. Very lucky bounce on that occasion, but that's what uh, football is all about. It was great play. I think it was Turnerhan who stuck the ball forward. Richard Dennis, I'm sorry, who really set that goal up, punched the ball forward, and Jinky had the run and misjudged it or a bad bounce any way you like. But Melbourne took full advantage to put it through for a very well timed goal. Blues sneaking away. Will they be the fresher side? Can the Hawks come back? They do it time and time again. Let's see if they can. There's Dippier Domenico, ran into a brick wall. Could have been holding the ball, but no, said the umpire. It is too high, said Ian Robinson. And he had a very sore shoulder after last week. And if that's the shoulder, he won't be too good after that knock. 
big hark to Pierre Domenico. There's a lovely kick to Brerard, and he should mark this. Oh, he didn't mark it because Rich Jones put him under enormous pressure. Down the ground it goes. The loose man is there. This is Robertson, a beautiful pass. Duratic, a great oh. one. Oh, I thought he marked it. No, said the umpire. The Hawks come back. Two airs to Tuck. Tuck kicks wide. Two on one here. A big chance now for the Hawks. Dippier Domenico. Great shepherding. He should have kept going. He gets in the hand pass. Russell Green, left foot. Brereton ducks back. Can't get back. They beat him over the line and through for a point to the Hawks. And that was a really good run down right from the back line. Yes, I do think that Dippier Domenico just went that one step too many. He was well tackled and a one point finishing out of it. That's a game of inches at the moment. Both sides just needing that break. Reese Jones to kick it in. A little indecisive. 9 10 to 6 12. Carlton lead. Reese Jones going up the middle. Intended for Madden. It's knocked away by Deer. Roving the pack is Collins. Well played. On the overlap, he gets the hand pass to Bacanara, who's been strangely quiet. High kick down towards full forward. Silvani into the fray. Puts it towards the boundary line. Robertson slips over. Chance for Platten. And it's out of bounds, and they'll have a throw in. They've got nobody at the feet of the pack in that forward area, Dennis. Been a problem all day for them. 9, 10, 6, 12, 17 and a half minutes gone. There's the boundary throw in. Madden tries to take clean possession, succeeds. Hand passes towards the boundary line, gathered by Green. He pulls it back, intended for Collins. Too much carry on the kick. Hawthorne have got the numbers. Over the ball is Tuck. He's got some time. 55 metres out from goal. Long kick. Silvani is down there. Reese Jones has had a wonderful match. He got back in the nick of time and knocked the ball against the post. Yes, lovely play, disciplined play by David Rhys Jones, but the Hawks, you can see this, yes, beautiful play. Off goes Wayne Johnston from the back line. Johnny Platten giving chase. Johnston, oh, big chance here to get the loose man going. But Ayres is there for Hawthorne, taps it on to Tuck. A bit of experience there. Gary Ayres back to the half. Oh, was that in the back? No, said the umpire. Play on as the ball shuffled further afield. Fraser Murphy caught. Platten has got it. Gets it further afield, and here come the Hawks again as Swab. Looking down there towards Curran and Silvani, four, two former schoolmates, battling for the ball. At half-back, and Silvani's put it out of bounds on the ball. And that was the pressure put on there by Peter Curran. Yes, he kept going all the way and forced the Silvani into that era. So it's a kick to Bertie Deep here a minute ago. Goes in short, intended for Schwab. He takes the mark, still outside 50. You like your football tough. This game is for you as he goes short to Kennedy, who's already kicked three goals. Kennedy centers the ball and finds Dia. Oh, he's going very well. short, Dennis. Yep. He actually went backwards then. Uh, they lost, I'd say, what, eight or nine metres then, Bob? They've had three kicks, and it's only travelled ten, ten yards further to goal. Yes, here's Rick Dia then. Long left foot kick. That's a oh. bomb. He's put it through. We apologise. Beautiful goal to Greg Deer, and uh, as it turned out, those three little short kicks finishing up in a great goal as on replay we see Kennedy take it, puts a little chip kick across the ground, and then Greg Deer finishes it off with a magnificent goal, kicking it from just short of the 50 metre line, through no mistake at all, a great goal at a vital time. Razor Murphy off the ground, Adrian Gleeson on the ground. So nine points the difference, the Hawks, they never give up, they keep coming back. Kicked away by Russell Green. Should be marked there in the centre of the ground by David Glascott, and it is. Play on, said the umpire, as a long kick by Glascott towards the forward line, nearly a mark to Kernahan. Kicked off the ground by Ayres. He's looking out there for Greg Deere, he's got it. A beautiful hand for Keith Tuck's doing well, now he's on the ball. He kicks to Kennedy, oh gee, the Hawks looking good now as John Kennedy takes a great mark on centre wing under enormous pressure. A shocking kick though by Kennedy. It was a tired looking kick. Hands into the hands of his name Satan. This is Michael Kennedy for the Carlton side. He kicks to Madden. Madden and Deer fisted away by Deer. Platten and Kennedy. Kennedy with the left hand. Naley. Oh, oh gee, grabbed there by Johnston away from Russo. A couple of mistakes here. Gary Ayres. In he goes. Trips over. Still going in after it. Richard Dennis runs 50 metres out for goal. Richard Dennis fires. He hooks it and puts it through for a point. That's his third in behind this quarter. of the afternoon, in fact, for this quarter. 
Great play by Kenny Hunter to get it out. They had the number there, Carlton. Should have been a goal. Wait for the kick in. Abbott straight up the middle. Turner hands in front. Waiting behind almost the mark to Johnston. He does well. Gets a hand pass across to Robertson. He's upended. Hand pass comes out then from Pritchard. Back comes Robertson. Robertson scrambles a kick to Bradley. Bradley feigns the hand pass. Stabs Goldwood. Puts it through. Three goals to Craig Bradley. He took full advantage of that. Hawthorne making a mistake in the almost in the middle. They had the chance of getting it out, but then we saw it forced forward by Shane Robertson. Out to Bradley on his own. Baines goes one way, then comes back the other. And you can't give Craig Bradley any opportunity. Accepted to try Buckinara in the middle at all, Bob. He, he's, he's doing nothing where he is. And he's best on the ground, Craig Bradley. Only six kicks, but three of those have been goals. And uh, Buckinara hasn't done anything down on the forward line. Tommy Alvin has really taken Kerry Buckinara apart. We know what a champion Buckinara is. He was best on the ground, the centre against the Swans a few weeks ago. Let's see if the Hawks can come back. Dippy Adamenico loses it to Naley. Naley to half forward. And Chris Langford ducks back to take the mark. He's been well on top of Steve Kernahan today. Langford is a magnificent kick. Brereton and Reese Jones. Brereton is not holding his marks. Reese Jones is well on top of him at the moment. And it's, oh, gee. Dermot put Reese down. He's put Reese Jones down behind the play. And now has no hesitation in playing the free kick up on centre wing. And that's sheer frustration. On replay, we see Brereton. <laughs> Put him down, but there's not much in there. Not fact, much in it. He held him up from hitting the drill. Bradley kicks it around the other side. Kernahan can't take the mark. And we'll have a throw in. Approaching 23 minutes in the third term. 10 11 to 7 13. Carlton lead. They've answered every challenge so far in this quarter. One down by Madden. Russo, the hand pass over the top. Taken by Pritchard on the outer side. Pritchard quickly to support. This is Schwab. Eludes Johnston. Drives it towards half forward. Brereton playing from behind. Reese Jones, a touch of arrogance about that. Brilliantly done, Reese Jones. Paddles it across to support. Dean gets it to Gleason. And the Blues on a roll. Robertson charges up through the centre. Kicks towards half forward. Hunter fell over. Chance behind for Meldrum. Ball bounces wide of Heehan Tuck. Arriving on the scene is Mew. Mew boots at grandstand side. The members wing. Gathered now by Kennedy. Lays it off looking for Aitken. Two young Tyros and they managed to get the ball out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in. Well, I've never seen a man look so tight as Chris Mew. There's the lead. And a young Ian Aitken. He's feeling the strain out there too. Madden off the ground. Mackenzie on for the Blues. They're saving his energy. Uh, Justin Madden. Good coaching. Paul Abbott. Hooks it back. Bacanara against Elvin. Uh, over the back is Robertson. Over to Elvin and over to Johnston. This is beautiful backing up. Here come the Blues again. Wayne Johnston, the low kick. Kernahan can't take the mark. In there is Tuck. Over to Langford. Magnificent play by the Hawks in defence. And that really was great play. It's a free kick for him in the back. We'll go back to the Evergreen champ, Michael Tuck. Just a question for you, Bob. I think this game is make or break time now. Would you take Madden off or would you go for the jugular? I'd go for the jugular. So would I. I'd worry about uh, what's going to happen in the last quarter at three-quarter time. But at the moment, I would really try and get a few more goals on the board. They've got the break and they should go on with it. Ball on centre wing. Aitken crashes his way in. Couldn't control it. Knocked wide of the pack by Russo. Battling after the ball is Alvin. Tries to paddle it back through the pack. It's taken by Bradley. Across to Glascott. Glascott kicks towards the boundary line. Now, if they were consistent, that was no different to the one in the first quarter. Boundary throw-in coming up. Madden is coming back on the ground, I fancy. Doritic, I think, is going off, Dennis. There's the boundary throw-in, then. Doritic. And Paul Deer, neither of them got a hand to it. Johnston going nowhere. Alvin played his heart out for Carlton this afternoon. Aitken scrambles a kick just around the boundary line. It trickles out of bounds. So Doritich is off. Madden is on. Carlton playing the better football at the moment. Hawthorne desperately need a goal if they're going to stay in the game. I agree with you, Bob. But I let's think... not forget, we thought this last week too. I'll tell you what, I will never open my mouth and write Hawthorne off. Uh, even at this stage, Carlton should be a lot further in front. Bit more of the play, but the Hawks are relentless. There's a lot of tired boys out there, though. Here they come again, the Blues. This time through Robertson towards half forward. Oh. It's a good mark taken by Naley. That was a ripper. That was a great mark on Peter Russo. We'll have to come back. I don't think the Hawks have won the 
allowed the Blues a goal just before three-quarter time. There's the kick. Out comes Abbott. And that's 15 metres. It's got to be against McKenzie. Ian Robinson says no. He got thrown to the ground after he took the mark. No 15 metres, as you can see on screen. There's the kick by Abbott. Out towards Paul Deere. And the young fella's got it. He's on the left foot. He's looking, oh, Brereton's a mile behind Reese Jones, but the ball beat them both over the line. Brereton looks a very, very tired player. Reese Jones looking remarkably fresh. I think it's probably because one player is uh, confidence. Uh, Dermot Brereton with only four kicks. Dermot Reese Jones, eight. But Brereton just hasn't held his marks. Boundary throw and out of side. Madden back on the ball. Punches towards the boundary line. He's been the dominant factor. We'll have a boundary thrown out there. That's in terms of the ruck work. I think if Hawthorne score a goal here before the three-quarter time siren, and we have been going 20, nearly 27 minutes, I think we're in for one of the best grand finals of all time. Madden goes up, backhands it down towards the boundary, taken out there by Robertson. Hawthorne work it forward. In front, Silvani right. takes the mark. Scramble kick came down from Vipi Domenico, but Silvani standing tall. He's had a wonderful game at fullback this afternoon. Some of the former Blues champ goes in short and finds Alvin. Tommy Alvin has been well on top of his opponent today, Gary Bacanara. I think the move might have been made. It's Russell Green standing on the mark. Out wide he goes. Bit of possession football here by the Blues. David Reese jones I think they've had a look at the clock here, Pete. They might have because they didn't gain anything really by that kick. Centre wing. John Kennedy looking tired, Ayers is there, gets in a hand pass, Michael Tuck towards half forward, it's no mark, no Sydney, oh great play there, Brereton kicks it away, Russell Green, one of the oldest players on the ground, is beaten by Kennedy, he's flattened after he kicked it, that could have been a free kick down the ground, Mew misses it, young Pritchard is there, this is danger because Bradley's there, and it's play on Sydney up by the oh, free kick to Bradley, I thought it could have been too, Bob, I thought it was Bradley's <laughs> kick, Robinson called play on and the Carlton supporters are not happy. The free kicks, 16 to Carlton as we watch now. I mean, it was just before that when I thought he was held on to. 16 to 21 in favour of Hawthorne. Madden again wins it down. Taken by Naley. Naley goes down towards the pocket. Wide of McKenzie. Out comes Kernahan. Couldn't take the mark. Off hands Abbott to Langford. He'll run it out. He goes to half back. He's confronted by Johnston. Gets the kick in around the outer side. Brereton's up, fisted away by Reese Jones, who's been the master. Brereton comes back. His hand pass isn't a good one, thanks to the pressure of Reese Jones. Robertson has the ball on the outer side, pops it over the top. Mark is taken by Gleason. Carlton move it forward again. Gleason goes long. Kernahan wrestling down there. Knocked away by his marker, Langford, towards the boundary line. It's picked up by Ayres. Ayres pumps it around the outer side. Defiance in this Hawthorne defence. Crashing in his Naley. Close to the boundary line. Over the ball is Alvin. He's held. Still it's Alvin battling with Bacanara. It's out of bounds. Throw in coming up. Well, the umpires have at least been consistent. They haven't picked out any ticky touch with three kicks. And the full marks of them. We thought early that probably Brereton should have picked up a few. But they've gone right through the game and umpired with consistency. Well, there's Justin Madden, the big arms out to Brereton. I wonder if they'll move him to the back line today. As he gets it across to Green. Green, a beautiful long kick. He's looking out there for John Kennedy, who leads Ian Aiken in the race for the ball. And young Aiken heads for the boundary line and puts it over the line. There's the siren. A very tired-looking Hawthorne. Can they... Have they got the legs? Have they got the heart to come back? Carlton look the fresh aside. At three-quarter time, the Blues lead in this great grand final. 10-11, 71 Carlton to Hawthorne, 7-13, 55. Carlton kicked four goals, three in that quarter, while Hawthorne added three goals, four. Same number of scoring shots, but Carlton stretched their lead from 11 points to 16 points. And probably Hawthorne a little bit lucky that Carlton didn't go further ahead during that term because they held sway for most of the quarter. Richard Dennis had uh, three, three shots at goal for three behinds, but that was probably made up for the fact that Craig Bradley put two through for good goals. David Reese jones has had a good hold against Dermot Brereton at the other end of the ground, and there's a shot uh, from the airship uh, looking right out across Melbourne and uh, the MCG in the foreground. But both ten and a half forwards being well held on either end of the ground. Far cry from last season at this time. Calvin trailed by 50 points. They now lead by 16 points. Half an hour remains in the 1987 season.
Hawthorne with 11 more kicks than Carlton and, uh, well, 17 more handballs. And yet you look at the scoreboard, it's 21 to scoring shots to 20 and 16 points the margin. So the free kicks to the margin where the Hawks also are on top. So two marks in favour of Carlton and that's the only place where Carlton lead except on the scoreboard. Bobby, it's interesting. These uh, Alan Jeans has switched Dermot Brereton down the full back. Langford's out at centre half back, still on Stephen Kernahan. So he's taken the gamble, tucks, tucks on the forward line. Awaiting the start of the final term. And the last half forward. Umpire Rosso holds the ball aloft and away we go. Hawthorne trail by 16 points, looking for their place in the sun with back to back premierships. There's the bounce. It's one down by Madden. Taken now by Jenke, dragged off it, down he goes, battling in there is Kennedy, and we'll have a ball up as we go down to Barry Bree. Barry very keen to uh, get their players moving in this set of last quarter. Very tired players, they've had a very long day. Alan Jeans used the analogy of 1971 when St Kilda were four goals in front at three-quarter time and wants his players to come back the way the Hawthorne side did in 1971. Still that temperature in the high 20s. Forced forward by Kennedy. Putting back in the race is Mew, hoping it will go out of bounds, and it does, and we'll have a boundary throw in. I think Mew has been put back to full back against McKenzie, and where it and brought further up the ground. And interesting that Greg Deer is off the ground on interchange, and his brother, young Paul Deer, would only be about six foot two. I say only, compared to his brother, he's not that tall, and he's doing the ruck work. He's mainly trying to crash his way through the back. The Hawks get it out of defence, up towards the half back line where young Pritchard who's battled very very hard today the young Tasmania well, he's been quite impressive Robert Walls will he be coaching his first premiership side he's played in a couple of winning ones as a great centre forward for Carlton now he's got a chance to lead the Blues through his coaching to a premiership last guy Mew and Chris Mew takes a safe mark in defence the Hawks will they'll come back they never give up this side Dennis a remarkable team of footballers, aren't they? Chris Mew, held last week, knocked out. I suppose he epitomises all there is to know about Hawthorne. This is Di Domenico driving it long towards half forward. The leaper down there was Peter Dean. Waiting behind, though, no runners for Hawthorne. Alvin sends it wide, and Glasgow takes the mark, and we'll get 15 metres. Done a pretty good job against Blackton's. Very good. David Glasgow, I don't think Clayton would have had 11 kicks either, so he's, he's certainly done his job, David Glasgow. That Hawthorne forward line is not playing well, there's a nice mark to Ian Aiken. Ten kicks in fact to Platten, so that's not the normal John Platten game. Ian Aiken, oh, there's a little chip pass. This is bad defence by Hawthorne to allow Warren McKenzie, who is a great kick for goal, Warren McKenzie, to mark about 35 metres out from goal, 45 to Briang. Well, not good defensive play that by the Hawks. There's a lot of very tired defenders, and I think Chris Mew's the most tired of the lot. As we see, Warren McKenzie, 35 metres out, firing at goal. I think he's hooked it slightly. He has at one point, and I think the Hawthorne supporters breathe again. They certainly would defeat because they really have to kick the first goal. They cannot afford Carlton to get another break. Uh, they're virtually three goals down, one point short of that, and they have to get the first goal as Alan Jeans has a close look at the situation. In the shadows of the Ponsford stand, Langford kicks off, he goes straight down the middle, off hands, it's taken by Kennedy, he's been a fine player this afternoon, pumps it back into the forward line, Kernahan leads in the race, bounced awkwardly for him, Langford is pushed off the ball relatively easily there by Kernahan, but then is claimed by Ayres, strong tackle by the Hawthorne vice skipper, he battles after the ball in the congestion, scrambles it back towards the practice wicket area, and, and the both pool. players have a lot of trouble keeping their footing, and eventually it's bounced off the Carlton player's boot and out of bounds. Well, that's what you call luck of the draw. Things like that to make a big difference in grand finals. There's uh, Paul Deere towards the centre of the ground. Dippier Domenico taken away by Johnston. Still got it. Oh, oh holding the man, said the up fire. Dippier Domenico was about to run with it, but it was a free kick, I think, to Wayne Johnston. No doubt he was grabbed after he disposed of the ball. He was playing for it, but a little shove there, as you can see in replay. They've got loose men everywhere. Out to Robertson. No man on him at all. Well, Robertson from half forward brings it to the pocket. Bradley can't mark it. Chris Mew 
some very tired players. Peter Russo can, is hobbling after the ball. He'll be playing it goes out. Robertson to McKennedy, the back pocket player. Kicks it high. The pressure now on the Hawks. The big fist is away. Here's a goal coming up to the Blues. Into the open goal goes Gleason, and it's a goal. That was the goal that really counted because I think Hawthorne had to win that, kick that first goal. We've said it a number of times now, but with tired players everywhere on replay, off the hands of the pack. Adrian Gleeson takes it like the true rover, and that's what Hawthorne have lacked right throughout the game. At the other end of the ground, whenever the ball has hit the ground, their smaller players have not been at the feet of the pack. Adrian Gleeson, the goal scorer. Five minutes gone. The crowd at Fever Pitch, certainly the Hawthorne supporters trying to rally their team. Madden, as he's done all day, put it out to Dean. On the overlap, the man who could be contending for the Norm Smith medal, that's Reese Jones. Through he comes, kicks it long towards half forward. Meldrum is down there, knocked away, but again, no ground support. Naley just runs away from three Hawthorne players. He's going goal with Mark Naley. He's put it through. Naley kicks his first goal, and that was an excellent piece of football. And I think that really showed those two weeks rest and what it does for him. But apart from that, the speed and skill of Mark Naley. He broke away, and the boy from South Adelaide puts it right through the middle. A great goal and a vital goal, one that would really lift the team. Rick Deere is warming up on the boundary line. There's Mark Naley. He came across from Adelaide just to get the thrill of Victorian football, Australian football as it is now, of course. Six minutes gone, and uh, Naley looks as though he will play in the Premiership side. Hawthorne are a great side. They'll, they'll fight it out, but five goals start, and we've been going six and a half minutes in the final quarter. Very tough task now. Let's see if they can come back. Half forward. Here they come again, the Blues. Kernahan now gets into the action. He kicks a goal. Is it another one? can do no wrong and that was set up by a burst through the center by Wayne Johnston he did not take the ball with him but he forced it forward as we there it comes now Wayne Johnston got it out Turnahan took possession and Chris Langford has done a superb job and yet Stephen Turnahan has still kicked three goals and set up for Carlton at this moment but Hawthorne we thought that last week Carlton have kicked the first three goals of the term. They lead by 35 points. They're playing on pure adrenaline at the moment. Johnston from Naley gets it across to support. Kennedy drives it long into the forward line, but a defiant mark is taken by Mew. Settles it down for just a moment. Chris Mew goes short. They need to dust themselves off and regain their composure and come again. Schwab drives it towards centre field. The leaper from behind was Reese Jones. Calvin claiming the mark in front. What's the umpire going to do? He's going to move it and ball it down. Well, Dean's in front. Did he mark it? Either one of the two Carlton players were mine. <laughs> Pretty close to a mark, wasn't it? Still, we've got to bounce down. In midfield. Just the start Hawthorne didn't want to this last quarter. Madden again, decisively. Gets it down to Kennedy. Gee, I've liked this game. To Aitken. Aitken goes long into the forward line. Too much carry on the kick. Mew gets back. Couldn't take the mark. He's Harris down there by Meldrum. And the ball's pushed across the boundary line. Now it's going to be a free kick. It'll be taken by Chris Mew. Chris Mew, a very tired-looking Chris Mew and a despondent-looking Russell Morris there on the bench. It's on half-back. Bradley towards half-forward. Kicked off the ground by Ayres. And this will be a mark the big Justin Madden and those big arms have certainly given them Carlton first use of the ball today over to Bradley then on to Johnston Johnston with that great kicking skills of his a long kick to the forward line the Hawk players desperately force it to the line it's still in play in fact there's Dermot Crowden who's had a very bad day he's now in defence over to Kennedy Kennedy runs to half back maybe if they can score a couple of quick goals it'll give them a heart bit of heart but they're a tired looking side as taking the mark in the center of the ground is Russell Green to Peter Russo who hobbles after after that kick down towards half forward Curran now it's his teammate in Swab Dippier Domenico caught 
gets in the hand pass. Rich Jones has been superb as he gets it across to Bradley. The Carlton players running on, playing great football at the moment. Out wide to Johnston, and all the Carlton players, Bobby, are firing at the moment. Oh, they've responded to the situation. They've lifted. They're running faster. They're jumping higher as Glasgow comes forward. Glasgow down towards the pocket. McKenzie lunges at the ball, and he's picked it up only centimetres off the turf. Burton back on the forward line. Abbott down to defence. Warren McKenzie getting his chance today, probably, through the absence of Satori. And that um, McKenzie may have been on his own there because the move was being made. Yeah, good point, Bob. Meldrum's coming off. It's hard to time too many changes in this Hawthorne defence at the moment because they're under pressure all the time. There goes the kick across the goal face, pack into the air, off hands. A chance on the ground now for Dennis. Turns around, kicks it across his body. Socket out of midair by Dia. Is that a mark? I think it'll be paid. Yes, it will be to Carlton. Strong mark taken as the ball came out on the rebound. Big McKenzie got his hands up, and it's stuck. Watch this. Yes, a definite mark to McKenzie, and Carlton really playing with confidence sky high at the present moment as we see a Hawthorne player in the hands of the trainers. I think it might be Chris Mew, uh, no, Bobby. Collins, I think it might be. Is it? starting to make it hard for Hawthorne now and the problem with the Hawks at the moment is that it's one thing to come back against Melbourne another thing against a side that's playing as confidently as Carlton are at the moment and with as much skill as Carlton have at the present moment some of the heads are down that's not a good sign from Hawthorne's point of view Well, to 7.13, Carlton in superb touch at the moment. Naley really has come into the game towards half-forward. Kernahan was at the front of the pack, kicked away in desperation by the Hawthorne defence. That was Chris Mew, but the ball stays in play. It's grabbed by little Fraser Murphy. Oh, great ta tackle by Collins and strong work by Abbott. Good play, the Hawks, but uh, it was holding the man, I think, in the meantime, to Warren McKenzie. And Warren McKenzie has kicked one. Let's have a look what happens. Abbott, oh, it's far too high around the neck it was. Good umpiring decision. Warren McKenzie has only had four kicks, but he looks like he's going to play in a premiership side. There's the kick. It floats. And uh, one point only. Coming off the ground is Russell Green. Will it be his last game for Hawthorne? He's had a bad day today, Russell Green. Paul Deere back on. So nothing going right for the Hawks at the moment. They've been really outclassed in this quarter. Bradley. Oh, geez, down Craig Bradley too. Platten has had a very quiet day. The Hawthorne Stars have been eclipsed today. There's Tuck to Brereton. Dermot Brereton. Peter Curran. Bacanara. No hand oh, pass. Gee, a hand pass to Brereton was on there for a certain goal, but he had a shot at goal and kicked it out of bounds. Yes, he had every opportunity to give the ball across to Brereton on that occasion. Foolish play. Now, Bacanara indicating the hand passes in the foreground, Alan Jeans having a look in these last two meetings. The second semi-final, Carlton won by 15 points and in round 14, Hawthorne by a point. Boundary throw in, Madden worked under the ball, he'll get the free kick. Carlton have won 14 premierships, they share that distinction with Essendon. A chance this afternoon to move ahead, alone on top as he sends the ball around the outer side. Gleeson takes the mark out there. 14-13 to 7-13. It's one thing to look at the scoreboard, but to look at this game, the spirit is sagging away from these Hawthorne players minute by minute as Dia goes up, fisting it forward. This is a real test for them. Bradley's got the run of it, but he's content to let it go out of bounds. And Michael Kennedy is playing a superb game for his side. He really thumped that ball back. And he's been a, an excellent player from quarter time onwards. Boundary throw in, centre wing. That's the margin. Once more, Madden wins it down. Shark this time by Schwab at close quarters. He gets it to Pritchard. Pritchard sends it high around the outer side. Aitken in from the side. Content to destroy. Knocks it towards the boundary. Platten picks up. Swings it down towards the forward pocket. Curran couldn't hang on. Calvin have got the numbers. In there again is Kennedy. Wide at the pack. A chance for Platten. He mishandled. That's most uncharacteristic. And the ball's out of bounds. Throw in coming up. Half-court flank. Let's look at that in replay. As we see Platten 
after fumbling it was Ian Aitken who dived in and thumped it over the line. Paul Deard having to do the ruck work and giving away many inches. Here's Michael Tuck. The Hawthorne champ fires at goal. He's still battling away there. Dermot Brereton, is it still in play? No. Back to beat uh, Dermot over the line, deep in that forward pocket. Look at the time clock at the moment. It is 14 and a half minutes gone. Final quarter. You see the look of disgust on Dermot's face as he couldn't keep that in play. Deep in that forward pocket for the Hawks. Big fist away, back to the line. It'll be another throw, throw in. Russell Green is about to come on the ground for Hawthorne. Peter Russo off a very tired looking Peter Russo. 15 minutes and Hawthorne have not scored. Still 30 degrees Celsius. Bacanara grabs it off the pack and puts it through for their first score of the quarter. One behind, but they need a lot more than that. 7-14 they are. Carlton 14-13, it looks like a Blues Premiership for 1987. Dennis? Yes, very much so, Pete. One of the reasons why he kicks in, that's David Rhys-Jones. He's closed down Dermot Brereton this afternoon. Coming in, Brereton, a real danger. And Rhys-Jones, well, he's a wayward customer, a controversial customer. But this afternoon, great coaching, I think, by Robert Walls. He challenged his star. My word, he didn't let him down. Ball on the grandstand wing. Kernahan slaps it away. Dennis, a deft little touch. Got it down to Fraser Murphy. Hooks it around the corner. Only as far as Collins. Now he's away. Long hand pass. Sends Swab away. Swab gets it to Kennedy. Kennedy, a rather untidy hand pass. Taken by Paul Deere. Paul Deere swings it down towards full forward. Rhys Jones in front. Race back for the ball. Well played, Rhys Jones. Got goal side at Brereton ran it through for a behind and that really tells the story of the afternoon it certainly does and uh, a great discipline game this by david reese jones and uh going to hand it to him dermot Brennan is a great player and a big name player but he's been really disciplined punched the ball away and has really been well on top all day as he gets it out to david glascott who has also been a very very disciplined player too the halfback young adrian gleason Another short pass. Oh, they're just keeping possession of the ball at the moment to Naley. There's Gleeson, though. They're full of running, uh, the Blues. Onto the left foot. A lovely kick looking for Hunter. Fisted away by Mew over the line. Half forward for Carlton. 14-13. 97, the Blues. Fourth on 7-15, 57. 17 minutes gone. Final turn. Boundary throw on other side. Scramble, as you can see, picked up by Deere eventually. Goes over the top, intended for Kennedy, going against the tight Glasgow. Dennis, I'm surprised that they just left Buckingham at half forward right throughout the day. He's superb game in the centre in the uh, early final, and it's surprising when he's really being beaten badly up forward that they didn't go into the centre of the ground. Been a very quiet player, Bob. Glasgow slips over, taken by Tuck. We suspect he's had his nose broken today, Tuck. He started well. That was unfortunate, the timing of that injury. Reese Jones again knocks it towards the boundary line. Alvin, he's played a wonderful game of defence too, content to tie it up. And I think we'll have a ball up just inside the field of play or is it out of bounds? Every Carlton defender you could uh, put that tag on because uh, they haven't had a weakness in defence. Silvani hasn't put a foot wrong. Kennedy in the back pocket, that was where he started. Every one of those players. Half forward, this is for the Hawks. Let's see if they can salvage something as Paul Deere hooks her back. That was beautifully done. There's Curran oh, coming in to lend a hand. Was Robertson. Silvani was wrestling away with Curran and Robertson was there. And the Hawks just haven't had the backup support for each other on the forward line. They've been well beaten up there. Listen, receives from Silvani. What a great thrill for Sergio Silvani. Have his son playing in a premiership side. He played in them. Now his son's going to play in one as Richard Dennis takes a nice mark centre wing. Out to Adrian Gleeson. Gleeson to the pocket. Kenny Hunter. Well, beautifully done by Hunter, but uh, those ageing legs of uh, Hunter, he's looking tired too, Bob. Yes, but Adrian Gleeson certainly not, as Robert Walls has a close look at the game. Gleeson has really come into the game in the last five minutes. I think he's ordering the champagne, Robert Walls. Approaching 19 minutes, there's the throw in. One down by Deer Johnston. Scrambles at Goldwood in the road, taken away nicely by Langford. Boots it back towards centre field. It bounces very high in the air, knocked on intelligently by Paul Deere. Kennedy lays it back into the path of Deere. He lumbers after it, can't control it, shows a lot of courage, dives on it, knocks it to Platten. Platten over the top. Now they've got a chance. This is Kennedy. Whoops. Kennedy, still some time. 
and passes it wide. Bacanara gets around the oncoming traffic. Back to Kennedy, who kicks into Silvani. Well, the confidence, the poise is gone from Hawthorne as Silvani quick rebound, runs it out of bounds on the 50-meter line, and the Blues supporters ecstatic. I think that sums the game up, Dennis. Uh, there it was on replay as Silvani came out, smothered it. Well, here it is with Madden again. He hits straight from the line. They'd be quite happy now if it stayed out of bounds for the rest of the quarter. But uh, a superb performance this at the moment by the Blues. They've had a great year. A terrific year, as has Hawthorne to fight their way back into this grand final. But there's a lot of very, very tired players quite happy to see that ball out of bounds. Robert Balls, an excellent coach, Robert Balls. We've got plenty of material there to work with. And this is, certainly helps having a man of six foot ten at those centre bounces, directing that ball out all the time. Here's Peter Swab, who's got such a big heart. Over to Dippier Domenico, who's gone out of the game in the second half. Here they come again, though. The Hawks are still batting away as Peter Swab marks at centre half forward. Uh, Robertson's done an excellent job on uh, Dippier Domenico, Bob, in the, in the second, second half. half. He has. He was too loose in the first half. Well, there's the short kick across to Darren Pritchard. And Pritchard will have to kick from about 45 metres. Hawthorne are really doing it hard to try and get a goal, whereas Carlton looked so dangerous. It wasn't for uh, Kernahan's opponent, and that is Chris Langford. Who knows what the score would be? Official attendance, 92,754 as Pritchard shoots a goal, and the young fella has kicked it. No need to say, a badly needed goal for the Hawks, uh, if they can kick another one immediately, it will lift their spirit, but they need to have it straight away. And they still trail by 33 points. Carlton are doing the running. Hawthorne battling hard and certainly have got plenty of heart, but they've still got to get the ball and get it forward quickly. Three points the margin. Approaching 22 minutes now. Back in the middle. Madden, as he's done all day, decisively yet again to Gleason. He was nabbed by Platten. Socket forward off the ground by Dean, down towards the pocket. Leading in the race down there is McKenzie, finessing with the ball like a rover. And is content to run it across the boundary line. Some rovers would do a little better in that situation, but McKenzie prepared to work. And now he comes back to contest the boundary throw in. Some of the crowd making for the exits. Not many, though. And, of course, the Blues supporters will linger. They're going to love what comes next. Boundary throw in. The hit-outs, as you saw, dominated by the Blues. Naley, clever, across towards Dennis. What a dream for him. Superb stuff on the cricket pitch area. Goes down towards the pocket. Awkward bounce. They've got the numbers down there. And now a chance for Fraser Murphy. Breaks away, goes goalward, and gets it. Well, we're really showing the difference between last year and this year. Carlton a far better side than this year. They were given a thrashing this year, and they're going to return the gesture this year. Uh, last year, they received the thrashing, and they're going to return that for compliment with really rubbing it into Hawthorne right now as Fraser Murphy showed what the legs are left in the Carlton side, and Hawthorne have run out of legs. Yes, uh, far too good the Blues today. A brilliant performance this by Carlton. That's Carlton's 50th century against Hawthorne. As we see, coming away with it, David Glasgow has done a superb job today too. A very disciplined job, as have a lot of those Carlton men have manned up and they have not wavered from their concentration all day. Scoring shots, 28 to the Blues. To Hawthorne's 20, it doesn't look a lot, but really Carlton have been the better side. Hawthorne has struggled very much so on the forward line. There's Wayne Johnson, another premiership coming up to Wayne. Russell Green, I wonder if he'll play next year. He's almost to the 300 mark. Brereton battling away. What a contest that's been. David Reese jones has given away a free kick here. But uh, on see. replay, no doubt about the free kick, but as Peter said, what a superb job Reese jones has done. Russell Green could possibly be... I think he's contracted for another year, Russell. He spent a few weeks in the reserves this year. Russell been a great player for Hawthorne. Towards the half-forward line. Chance for the Hawks now. I'm sure they would like to finish, finish on, Bob, with a couple of quick goals. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Hawthorne's spirit would uh, make them want to get a little bit closer. 
but uh, Carlton have shown um, just as much spirit, possibly more, and they've shown the ability to go with the spirit. Bounce in the pocket. Again, Madden buys a little more time, just hits it out of bounds, walks three or four paces across to his right-hand side, and then will contest the boundary throw in. He could win the Norm Smith medal. We'll get Bob's thoughts as the quarter wears on. Not long to go now. Kennedy, Johnston's got it. Swings it around the outer side. Kernahan sandwiched between Hawthorne players. This is Naley. Sweeping hand pass. Sends Bradley away. Bradley, look at the pace. He decides he'll take them on around the outer side. He wins a free kick, or should have. He be... was holding the man. Oh. He handballed it forward. It was a full brother to holding the man if it wasn't. <laughs> He can't believe it, Craig, but Bradley, a great camera shot, that. I think the umpires are tired, too. They couldn't be bothered running further down the ground. We'll have a throw in, fellas, they reckon. Oh, well, even young Darren Pritchard having a laugh about that. It's good to see a bit of humour, even at this stage, in a BFL grand final that the players can have a laugh. Young Darren Pritchard, he'll never forget this moment. Towards centre wing. Swab has battled hard today. I'm surprised, though, they haven't tried Bacchanara in the centre of the ground because he's really had a quiet day up forward. Chris Jones, I think a big chance. Ten kicks and six handballs must have a big chance of winning that Norm Smith medal, Bob. It's not just his possessions. It's the fact that he's cut out Dermot Brewitt. Madden knocks it forward again. That was a good ruck knock. He got it to Johnston. Must have heard Peter talking. This is Abbott. He's played the mark across half-back. Chip passes towards centre field Kennedy. One sense just before half-time, Carlton are running the better. And certainly they've put that on the scoreboard in the second half. He is long into the forward line. Off-hand Silvani. He's a master of getting the ball out of bounds with Stephen Silvani. He's played a great game. He has played a great game. He's beaten everyone that his two former schoolmates. Uh, and let's not forget the game of Chris blokes. Langford at the other end of the ground. Yep. Chris Langford has been superb playing on Kernahan. Kernahan's kicked three goals, but Langford has been superb under enormous pressure. There is Justin Madden. Lovely kick to centre wing. Very, very fresh and fit-looking Carlton side. Wayne Johnston. He will love this, Wayne Johnston. What a great finals competitor he's been over the years. There's Gary Ayres. He's a great battler, too, as he brings it towards the forward line. Curran couldn't take it. There's Tommy Elvin, another superb player. For the Blues, disciplined, tough, tight. Been a great player, Elvin, today, Bob. Oh, he's put Bacchanara right out of business, and that was a perfect example there. He just dived in and trapped the ball. Didn't try and hang on to it. No one ha had hold of him. As we see uh, the staff here at the MCG watching the situation. That last pack was a hairdresser's dream. Knocked down there by Madden. Picked up by Rhys Jones. Gets a hand pass out, and away comes Aitken this time. Aitken goes long into the path of Gleeson. Gleeson with runners inside, pulls it back, intended for Hunter. Over the top came Mew, close to the boundary line. The two veterans go at it. It's back with Naley. Somehow he gets out of there, back to Gleeson. Gleeson slides it across the face and through for a behind. They can do no wrong now, Carlton. 15-14 to 8-16. 27 and a half minutes gone. There's another page to be written in history. Carlton will be premiers. This is Dia. Carlton win the premiership in the first year of Australian football. This is Collins from half-back, running it out now for Hawthorne, up towards centre wing, goes over the top to Kennedy. Kennedy down towards half-forward, back to Collins. Collins with dash inside 50. Can he kick a goal, little young fella? No, he's missed, I fancy, or has he? No, he's got it, he snuck it in. That's young Collins showing more legs than most of his Hawthorne teammates on that occasion. He really rose to the occasion, gave the hand pass over the top, came on, gave it to Kennedy, took it back again, and Collins really showing the dash that we're seeing from the Carlton side at the moment. But still, Hawthorne fighting it out, 34 points down at the moment. They refuse to give complete sway, but they're finding it hard with 28 and a half minutes gone. It looks like a, well, it is going to be a Carlton flag. Now they hung in there with Carlton for a long time. Carlton now lead. They haven't been thrashed, haven't been disgraced, the Hawks. But uh, certainly that they're a lot fresher and fitter for this game, the Blues. But look at them still battling it out. There's uh, Swab to Platten, who's had a quiet day, to Dermot Brereton, 
to Dipier Domenico. Here's a chance for a goal to the Hawks. Oh, no, the mark wasn't taken by Peter Curran. Enormous pressure put on by Stephen Silvani. He's cramped up there, Peter Curran, too. Not Nothing serious. No. It's a tribute to the running players of both sides. None of those players have cramped up this afternoon as the ball comes along the members' side wing. Kennedy, opposed to Green. Green did a brilliant move. There's the side. Walls is awaited. With him is Wes Lofts. And Carlton of Premiers for 1987. An outstanding performance. Yes, a magnificent performance by the Blues. They fully deserve the Premiership. Robert Walls, their coach, is coming down now. And he deserves whatever accolades. The move of putting uh, Reese Jones onto Dermot Brereton, a great success. But no matter where you look, uh, the Carlton defence was right on top all day. Aitken did a superb job, although Kennedy was the best of the Hawthorne forwards. After he couldn't handle the job, Ken Hunter in defence, he was moved down. Justin Madden almost did as he liked in the ruck. And Steve Kernahan still managed to kick three goals, along with Craig Bradley. Although in Kernahan's case, he was well beaten all day with a superb performance by Chris Langford. He was a magnificent player for the Hawks. At no time did he really lower his colours. He continued to be on top right throughout. But a very, very happy Robert Walls coming across. Delighted Carlton supporters, their general manager, Ian Collins, down there, along with Tommy Alvin, Captain Stephen Kernahan. And they deserve every accolade that one could possibly hand to them. Hawthorne, well, if there was a side that uh, went in one under a cloud, Chris Mew certainly wasn't fit. Neither was Russell Morris, but you can make no excuses because Carlton, with a better side on the day, fully deserved their win. Carlton by 33 points. The final scoreline, 15-14 to 9-17. So the scenes at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in the wake of what was a great grand final for three weeks. For Peter three. Motley out there, is it? I think three it weeks. is in the centre of that crowd, isn't it? I'm not quite sure. Um, but he'd have every right to be out there. Um, Stand by for the presentations, as I was saying, a great grand final for three quarters and Carlton breaking it open in the last quarter. Here's Ross Oakley. of the Norm Smith medal. The bad guy is a winner at the end. It's got a happy ending. David Rhys-Jones is the Norm Smith medalist in the 1987 Grand Final. Well, how about that? Well, I would like to say here that the Western Australian Tribunal were criticised for fining David Rhys-Jones, and it's no coincidence for mine that from that moment he has not put a foot wrong. Speedo VFL Premiership, the Carlton Football Club.
number 17, Mark Kaley. Number 21, Craig Bradley. Number 22, Ian Aitken. So the spoils have gone to the victors. Stephen Kernahan, the skipper, and Robert Walls with the Premiership Cup. It's been a tough week for that man. Robert Walls, who came across last season from Fitzroy. Stephen Kernahan also last season travelled further. He came from Glenelg, and Robert Walls will respond. That cup will soon be filled with champagne, Dennis. Cup. We've worked very hard 
The players have been fantastic, very professional, determined, and we've got 20 brothers out on the ground today, but there's plenty of other brothers who supported us, who were not out here, but they've helped just as much. Thank you. The 15th Premiership for Carlton. And now I think it might be opportune for Steve to lead the players on that traditional lap of honour. There you go. So the Carlton players coming down to run their lap of honour, a tradition of VFL Grand Finals. And of course, as Bobby was saying, that cup needs to be filled with champagne. Carlton winners by 33 points in the VFL Grand Final this afternoon. And I guess a lot of what's happening out there at the moment isn't being taken in by these young men. They know what they've achieved, but they're I would imagine, on air. Dennis, that they're waving to two young guys in particular at the moment. Although Des English you wouldn't exactly call young, but I believe that that gesture at the moment is for Peter Motley and Des English. And uh, Charlie, saying to them that they're a part of that cup and... Uh, well, I'm sure that they gave a little bit extra for those two unfortunate guys. A great gesture, that, from the Carlton players, and I think that was magnificent. There's the first man to take a drink out of the cup. Steve Kernahan, the Carlton captain and champion, and, uh, well, he'll, I think he'll be out there many, many more times in the future, Bob, uh, leading the Blues. Well, I'm sure Stephen Kernahan will be around for a long time. He's been a superb leader for Carlton. Uh, wasn't uh, one of his greatest games today, but he was still in there. Managed to kick three goals. One in, he didn't score a goal in the first quarter, but from that moment on, he put a goal on the board in each of the remaining three. His opponent, Chris Langford, was by far uh, Hawthorne's best player. Played an excellent game for the Hawks and uh, never at any stage uh, lowered his colours. The whole Carlton defence did their job and around the ground and their running players finished it off better. It was, it was interesting, Dennis, that they didn't have... On neither side had a wingman on one side of the ground. Strange some of the tactics employed today, weren't they? So, jubilation etched on the faces of the Carlton players. And we'll be back in just a moment. Well, welcome back once again to the VFL Sports Centre as we take a look at the scoreboard on Speedo VFL Grand Final Day 1987. And there is the story of the Grand Final. Hawthorne led by three points at the end of the first quarter. At half-time, Carlton had an 11-point advantage. They were 16 points in front of Hawthorne at three-quarter time, and they won the Premiership by 33 points, 15-14, 104 to 9-17-71. Blues first premiership since 1982. These are the multiple goal kickers for the day. Stephen Kernahan three, Bradley three, and Johnson two for the Blues. Kennedy, the only multiple goal kicker for Hawthorne with three goals to his credit. How does it feel? Oh, it's fantastic. It's where, do think, wonderful. where do you think you won the game today, Justin? Apart from oh, this help, I think, I think in the end it was all over. I don't want to get left behind. You won't get the left boys, behind. The boys are going. I don't want to be last in either. Okay, thanks very much, Justin. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Looking at the stats for the day, amazingly, both sides having the same number of kicks. Marks in favour of the Blues, handballs, 25 in favour of Hawthorne. But the game really belongs to the Blues because they used the ball so much better than Hawthorne. Peter, it's interesting. Bobby made the point about last year's grand final, the fact that Carlton lost to Hawthorne. You don't get revenge for those sort of things, but you get a great deal of satisfaction coming back the following I, season. I think the side that loses the grand final has got that great incentive the next year and I think you can almost back them if you're a betting man the next year and uh, there they are the Carlton suppliers they're really deliriously happy they are and uh, so they should be they're a great side the Carlton side I was most impressed uh, Bob and Dennis with the discipline of the yep. Carlton players today a lot of those players sacrifice their normal natural natural running game and the aggression and the aggression early they took it up to Hawthorne who are well noted for their aggression but they really did sacrifice their games to curb some very very talented players. Robbie Walls made the point coming into this game, he said it was a far better outfit, a tougher outfit mentally than they were last season, Bob, and certainly we saw that on the ground today. A couple of times they were challenged, and they came back with the goal they had to get to put down the challenge, didn't they? 
Okay, so a well-balanced side and uh, the whole, I, I gave most credit, I think, to the Carlton defence. I think every Carlton player at some stage bogged in. We mentioned that Kernahan was beaten, but he still managed those three vital goals. And that's, you know, you can't, you can't put them, well, anything on kicking those goals in a vital time. Bob, uh, the Hawthorne side, five grand finals, a magnificent effort now. Where will they go from here? That's a long time to be up at the top. Well, we thought two years ago that they were going to be in trouble uh, and they came back and won last year's premiership. So you would never know with Hawthorne because they're a magnificent club. And uh, the two, I think, best run clubs in football are played off today and uh, that's taking nothing away from sides like Essendon but I do believe that the the best two clubs in the league we said this before the season started and uh, they played off but the best side won on the day there's not a doubt in well, the world. Well the Carlton committee you'd have to hand it to them they have recruited magnificently in the last two or three years to, uh, with the view to winning a premiership and it's come to fruition. One of your own players Dennis he played poorly and was taken off in that second semi uh, Richard Dennis yes. uh, he came back today. I made the point today earlier a dream come true for him Bob he came across from East Perth certainly didn't come across with a big reputation just no. a player on the East Perth side over there but as we've seen surrounded by very good players his natural talent came through he's a very talented individual he and Hunter really yep. set things up early in that first always quarter always looked dangerous on the forward line didn't they that was right. the difference between the two sides yes Hawthorne's forwards were most disappointing I think they were relying on Dermot Brereton they had no rovers in the forward pocket and Johnny Platten was down yep. I think everyone expected a big game Buccanara. from Johnny Platten their big Gary Buccanara we didn't side all day so right. they couldn't really beat Carlton with those star players not co not contributing so that's the scene from the Melbourne cricket ground on what's been a big day the 87 grand final it's gone to Carlton by 33 points after they trailed by three points at quarter time let's go back to Ken Holmes Dennis Bob and Peter thank you very much indeed for a great job well done and uh, particularly right throughout the year tremendous work fellas well at the end of this historic year of VFL football when the game's undergone enormous change we see Carlton being written into the record books as VFL premiers of 87 this has been the year when the Australian game expanded its horizons with West Coast Eagles and Brisbane Bears joining the revitalized VFL competition 87 will be remembered of the year of the full forwards and killed as Tony Lockett won the Brownlow medal for the first time a season that saw the full forwards kick in excess of 100 goals two of them Melbourne surge to contest the finals will long be remembered, as will their courageous captain, Robert Flower, who bows out of the game. 1987, memorable, historic, exciting, and over, except for the celebrations of a win. Roll on, 98, 1988, our bicentennial year. We're ready for you. Thanks for your company throughout the season, to all those stations that have supported us. Thank you very much from all at the VFL Sports Centre. Goodbye for now.